I have to schedule about seven guests a week to get four people. Wow. Do you know what a problem that is? And then you hear them talk and they're like, oh, it's no big deal. It's, I don't even think it's a story. And then you interview them and you're like, bro, you got a great story. He was like, we were so over the top in love. When he got in trouble, she had agreed that if he got less than, I think it was like seven years, she would wait for him. Because sometimes you'll interview somebody and then as soon as you kind of sign off, you'll be laying in bed that night and think, man, I never asked him this or that. You start thinking of all these questions I should have asked. Hey, this is Matt. I'm here with Zach. We decided to do a stream yard to talk about basically kind of talk about our channels. And also I'm going to make a plea to viewers about being guests on the show. So check out the video. Here's why we're, we're here. Guests. Not, guests. What, it's S T not e, two S's guest. Yeah. Guests. So I need guests for my, my, for my channel. Yeah. So I, I think I told you this, I have to schedule about seven guests a week to get four people. Wow. Do you know what a problem that is? So that's why I was like telling you, like, you need to, if you're going to put out a video a week, you need to schedule at least two or three, two or three, and then see what shows and what flakes. Right, because let's let's face it. If you get two people, it, let's say you get all three. Let's say you say, "Oh man, I scheduled three and I got all three. Great." It, then Colby will edit it. He'll stick it in the queue, and you'll have it ready for when you don't have a guest. Right. You know, we've got a couple weeks uh, of probably backed up, but I also will do. I'll have like three people in a day, and all three of them will cancel. And sometimes, you know, I'll do two and get two people. But so my one problem is getting guests and getting guests that show up and let's face it, you know, the, the people that I'm dealing with are not that, not that one. First of all, most of them aren't that responsible, but second, second to that is that things happen. You know, I've had people that were going to come on the show and suddenly like, you know, their daughter got into a car accident and it was really bad and they were in the hospital and they're like, look, bro. I, and it's not that they couldn't make it. It's like, look, I just don't think I'll be able to, to, to focus right. on being there. Like I'd rather be headed toward, you know, the hospital. And, you know, to me, it's like, Oh, you were, you're not, you know, you're not performing surgery, but I, right. but I hear you, you know, you probably care about, you know, your daughter. So, you know, that sort of thing happened. You, you probably people, care about That's That's your response. People is that what you're so, thinking? Is that what, is that, that, is that the quiet part? Is that No, I say, part? I say all the, the appropriate things like, Oh, oh bro, okay. that's, that's crazy. Okay. I'm so sorry. Wow. My heart goes out to you. I say the right stuff. Okay. Okay. Um, they don't know. They don't know. <laughs> okay. What I'm, doing. I'm just checking. I'm just checking. Um, the other thing is, but then, and, and then sometimes people get sick. Like I get that. I've been sick, uh, before, like I was actually supposed to do Ian Bix podcast and literally woke up at like, it was supposed to be at the airport at let's say six or something. I woke up at like two in the morning with COVID and I was like, I, I can't, there's no way. I was like, there's no way. And so I waited like an hour and then I think I woke up again like an hour later and i said i can't do it bro i can't do it so i texted him i was like look i'm never gonna make it you know so i understand that happens and, and listen i paid for a plane like it was a few it was months and months ago so i i said look i'll pay for my own plane ticket i will fly up there like you know it's definitely my fault i'm sorry so i mean i know things happen but so let's say but it still doesn't matter what the reason is. It still takes seven to get four. You're going to have to schedule two or three to get one. So mine's been a little different. So my situation has, well, all right. So I haven't had, listen, the people harass me about doing, like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why aren't you doing the podcast? Right. Like, are, are you going to interview me today or what? You know, because so mine hasn't been people canceling. And that's probably because I've only lined up a few. Mine has, has been um, generally the ones that cancel have been people who don't know what to talk about. Like, what is it I'm going to say? You know, and, and they don't they don't actually agree to do it. They are like, I don't Trick know, them. you know, what do I have to talk about? What do I say to this? This part is interesting. I don't want to bring this up because I don't want to get in trouble and all that other BS that goes into that problem. So, I always just tell them all like, look, how long ago was it? 
you know, statute, most statute of limitations are five years. You're not going to be getting in trouble. And, you know, just to sell, don't use the guy's name and don't admit to a murder. And, you know, don't be, you know, don't be stupid. Don't, don't, what's the guy's name? Uh, uh, Keefy D or something like, don't say I handed the guy the gun and, and he shot him. Yeah. He shot don't, him. Like, don't, don't, don't do what we witnessed in Coleman as people right. are. <laughs> don't don't admit to conspiracy to commit murder you know yeah, that's like, right. on, on on walking the track yard you know like yeah i killed him you know and and when did you shoot him i actually shot him in the head twice really <laughs> yeah. no no i'm a i'm a what is it um no no hey bro honestly i'm a i'm a jailhouse lawyer it's against, <laughs> it's against my ethics to say anything that's right now i the body is the, yeah, I need the details one more time. Right, the body is buried behind which? which <laughs> oh, your mom's house. Does she still live there? <laughs> Absolutely. So absolutely. Or in so my case, or in my case, and and who has the money? <laughs> so and, and and the evidence of that is. Yeah. But so all right. So yes. So I my problem is just they don't want to reveal certain information. Like, um, I had one guest that I wanted to bring on. Really, I wanted to bring her on because she was locked up with Elizabeth Holmes. Right. And I, I really wanted them to talk about that. But she said that she had a situation. She actually had a lot of situations, really. Um, like, like um, one of her kids were shot recently. And then another one of her kids had an episode that actually made the national news where the police came. And But she didn't want to discuss it because he had trial coming up. Well, I mean. But don't discuss it. Exactly. But I tell her you were on the news talking about it. You were on the oh, news. People are stupid. I mean, what the, the situation she had where her son held her hostage. So, I mean, it's not like I guess you can't admit that he didn't hold you hostage because they arrested him when you convinced him to give himself up. So, I mean, I don't I don't know. It's you well, know, it's not like she has to. Well, OK, yeah, you're right. I don't know what if that has to do with the why she was locked up in prison. No, no, no. So Actually, to me, I would be like, we're not even going to talk about that. We're going to talk about your childhood with well, the first time you committed crime, where you went to school, you know, your, your, you know, and then how you eventually figured out, you know, what the crime you were doing, what you did to get to federal prison, what it was like in federal prison. And then you recently got out and that's it. That's all we're going to talk about. We're not going to talk about this other thing. Well, you know, the funny part is that's what I wanted to talk her to talk about. And she wanted to bring up her son. So I kind of meet her in the middle, but then she diverted back on. I don't know. It, it was just that was a bizarre incident. Um, I I have a couple of other opportunities, you know, and I just I just have to I just have to bring it to the light. I have to the, the, to bring them on and see what I can do. You know, you you on the other hand, Matt, you're like you've had some fantastic guests, you know, and you're able to extract very interesting tales out of each person. You know, and that's a talent that I think I need to pick up, you know, so I guess I'm going to have to bring on a lot of guests and see if I can extract some interesting stories, because yeah. I'm sure a couple of them, it's it's kind of like, OK, that's not that interesting, but we'll see if we can make it work. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, honestly, I, it's it's a formula. And, and if you stick with that formula, you don't end up getting the same story, because obviously, if I say to somebody, oh, well, where'd you grow up? You know, and, you know, so one person's going to be like, oh, I grew up middle class. Uh, my parents were married. Everything was wonderful. My father, you know, sold. He was a manager of a car dealer. My mom was, a, you know, what? and they're going to have this normal childhood. And right. no, I never really got into trouble. I ended up going to college like you're like, OK. The other guy, you're going to say, so where, where'd you grow up? And he's going to say, bro, I grew up in the projects. You know, my mom, <laughs> fucking, she couldn't handle us, man. I was arrested <laughs> when I was 11. The first time I got in trouble with, you know, and you're going to, it's a vastly different story. So you can't say, so to me, it's like formulate what I'm, the questions I'm asking, but the answers turn it into a completely different story. Right. So the next thing so, you know, this guy's in juvie, he's, he's breaking into houses. He's, it spins off. Now I get back to like the, you know, well, main story. Yeah. Well, then I keep kind of like, you know, well, where did you ever end up graduating high school? Cause that's one of the, you know, and they're like, nah, bro, man, I got a GED and, and juvie. And I, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So it, right. you still kind of go back to those, but those questions weave that story. And so it seems like a completely different story, even though it starts at the same point. Right. Good so, point. 
Um, very, very good job. The interview. So here's what's funny. The last interview I did, you know, at one point when we were talking about this, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, did I get it back around to the crime he committed? Like, I completely went off point and never asked him about why he ended up in federal prison, which was um, making an attempt to go um, do a bank robbery. And I never even got around to that. The oh, man, that's, yeah, that's, you got to go. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> you got like, yeah, sometimes you got to, sometimes you have to make notes. Right. Um, you know, it, it definitely teaches you how to pay attention to, you know, to the, per to what's, to the story and what's happening. Even if I don't know the story, typically I talk to the guests for a couple of minutes. Like if it goes to more than five minutes, then I get to that point where it's like, Hey, you know what? Let's just start. Cause a lot of times the more interesting conversations happen before you actually hit record. Right. You know? And the other thing is I really, because I kind of try and do keep it formulate, you know, that stick with that formula. So I don't get off topic and never end up asking why they were, went to prison. Right. So, you know, once we start going, spinning it off, then I'm like, Oh, 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 oh okay. You know what? I, I understand the basic story. Let's go back. Let's go ahead and start. And I cut them off because sometimes they'll start telling a good story and you're like, man, we need to be recording this. And so I don't want to hit record and then go and say, yeah, go ahead. You were telling me the story because I want to go back and start at the beginning. Right. We'll get to that story, but you have to remember that. And it's difficult. Like, it's, especially it's difficult for me to remember it. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I have a horrible memory. I'm an old man and, 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 you know, so it's luckily if you keep, I've noticed if I kind of stick with that basic formula, I tend to get back to that point. Well, I got, I've got to work on that, you know, and, 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 you know, my mind is on the legal aspect of it. And so I go down that wormhole instead of like into the juiciness of the story. And See, bank robbers okay. have some great, great, great stories. Yeah. Like yeah. I, I have um, like meeting how they got their name, their, their reasoning of why the, the FBI gave them a certain name, their rationale for robbing. Oh, bank robbers are the best, I think, with the stories. I, I, I love them. <laughs> yeah. I, I, <laughs> Teller I, I, reactions I, and all that stuff. Yeah, I've got some, I've had some good ones. The problem is some of these guys' stories, like I didn't really know how to interview anybody at the, not that I know, not that I'm great now, but like, I hate it because sometimes you'll interview somebody. And then as soon as you kind of sign off, you'll be laying in bed that night and think, man, I never asked him this or that. You start thinking of all these questions I should have asked. Right. So I have a question. So what kind of guests are you looking for? Um, so I, it, they can be, I can do criminal stories or I can do like extraordinary achievements. This doesn't necessarily have to be crimes. It can be something that they've done in, in, in life or, or a opinion of something, or they've attended certain events. Cause I, I kind of want to mix it up a little bit, but I do, I like the, the crime stories cause you know, naturally of my background and to get an opportunity to break them down. But so that would be my main focus, but also maybe people who have been around criminals just the other day, you know, cause I still do a little bit of law work. And just the other day I was talking to um, a woman of a rapper named Icy Blue, who's in jail. And she had me on the phone almost an hour and a half, but telling me stories that were blowing my mind. She was absolutely hilarious. I enjoyed the whole conversation. And, you know, she was talking about, and she's never been in prison, but she is just one of those things where all of her kids are in prison. And because her daughter and her son were rappers, because she's telling, oh, great stories. Because she's saying her, her son grew up all around all black guys, has a platinum grill in his mouth. What's his name? His name is Little, Little Blunt. <laughs> <laughs> he has it. He got it tattooed on his chest. At no city. reason to search his car. Yeah, right. I don't know why they searched my car. <laughs> well, little blunt. Yeah, it, your AKA came up on their screen. It's a little blunt. <laughs> yeah. So, but here's what's funny. He's in Pollock, and he is the uh, what? Did, what do they call it? The um, when you when you speak for the white for the white car. What, like the shot caller? Shot caller, there you go. He's grew up around all black men, has 
platinum grill in his mouth, Lil Blunt on his shirt. He's a rapper, right? <laughs> Shot caller for the white car. I'm like, like, I'm like, at what point does he go, you know, guys, hey, cut it out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I don't agree with anything you guys are thinking or doing. You know, this is a waste of my life. <laughs> So, but it was so interesting. Like I had thought, like when I hung up, I'm like, man, maybe I should interview her because yeah. she is just, and she's never been um, arrested or in jail. Oh, she was, she was hilarious. She was hilarious. Yeah. It'd probably make a good interview though. She could tell you all the, all the stuff about her kids and this, you know, oh God. And I got the phone call. I didn't oh, go down God. there. Listen, listen, what this her, idiot did. her parenting. Oh, she's, she's hilarious. She said, like, I, I should think about that. Let me and let me tell you another person would be Kat, who's never been to prison, but she snuck items into prison. So it's, right. it, 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 it could be like different, you know, and, and I'm talking like going in completely loaded, you know, and, and the hiding spots. And you're like, are you what? Yeah, it works. Passing, passing things with kisses and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, well, it's. it's I don't know. Um, I was going to say, here's the thing. Like right now, your channel's got what? Like 3,000 subscribers or something like right. that? Right. So, I mean, you know, to, like the big thing is like just to, it's really about just posting stuff. Right. You know, you got to post something. So it's like, you know, you got to post something every week. You post something every week and, and then, you know, people get to expect it. And then, you know, money starts to build up and this starts coming in more and the subscribers grow and, you know, then we get you on different podcasts to, to talk about your story, but then also to talk about your YouTube channel, then you're, you get more and more, you know, and, and that's not hard to do, but you got to get some more stuff. You got to be able to, you have to post at least once a week right. to the yeah. point where you're making enough money that you start seeing it trickle in and then you'll start going, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. I can see this happening. I need to put up more posts and, and me talking about that. I'm telling myself, cause she asked me how she could help me. And I need to tell her, like, you need to come on my podcast, yeah. you know, and, 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 and talk to me about having kids that are in prison. How, how are you dealing with that? Oh, she's, she is a hoot, man. She is hilarious. Um, you know what I need to, well, you know what? I actually already did this. I got business cards that have a, a, a QR code on it for my, for my YouTube channel. Oh, really? I just hand somebody the card and say, oh, yeah, yeah, here's my information. And then they can scan it and just, boom, brings them right to YouTube and they can subscribe. Like when, QR is the most beautiful thing in the world. Yeah, it's pretty. It's Linking pretty, the world. Yeah, so I was going to say my problem is like I need guests. The The problem is, well, I need guests, but I need I the kind of guests that really do well that for some reason I don't seem to be able to get these guests. And and. And I, they're probably few and far in between, but I, but I'm saying this to like anybody that's watching, I got two, I got two problems. One, I would love some guests that are, that are like, you know, any kind of the cyber guys, right. Who have done like, kind of like, you know, internet scams, cyber scams, or they've, you know, maybe they've, you know, been on the dark market. Maybe they're just selling over the internet. They're running right. some kind of a scam. I love those. It could even be drugs. Like, I, I don't care what it is, but I love those kinds of scams that they're super interesting. Counterfeiters, credit card guys, because they, they have tons of stories because they've been chased. They've been, you know, they got funny stories and they're usually pretty, pretty funny, pretty sharp, yes. pretty funny. Um, So I love those. I mean, I, I mean, I look, I, I like bank robbers. I like, I like, you know, financial crimes. I like all those too, but the guys that do well are the guys that a lot of these credit card guys and stuff. I, I, I love those stories. So that's one thing. And then the second thing that is killing me is I get tons of, I probably get one or two a day at least where it's somebody sending me an email saying, bro, um, you know, Rick Johnson, there's a guy, Rick Johnson in, you know, in, Coral Springs that got arrested for running a Ponzi scheme. You got to have him on. <laughs> Check it out. It's like, that's not like they think they're helping me, but like, I don't have time to track this guy down. Right. To get his phone number or, or whatever, his Instagram and send him an email or send him an instant message and track him down. Like guys are like, you know, there's, they're like, Oh, I'm trying, I'm trying to help you out. Wait a minute, bro. If you really want to help me out. Like, Track him down, like Call find him, out. Tell him. Right, contact he him. Needs and the say, exposure. 
Absolutely. Contact him and say, listen, man, I, I, I want to get you on this guy's podcast. Like, I think your story's fascinating. I think you should be on this guy's podcast. Would you be interested? If the guy's like, yeah, I'd be interested, then great. Let me put you in contact with him. What's your right. email address? What's your, you know, like help me coordinate because a ton, I spend a ton of time coordinating. Imagine I'm trying to schedule seven, at least seven a week to get four. That's a lot of coordinating. Um, especially when people are, you know, people are late, they push them back or at the last minute they change or, Hey, can we do it tomorrow at two? It's like, no, <laughs> no, I have three of these things tomorrow. I have two at tomorrow, or I have a two of those and, you know, a, an appointment at the dentist, you know, or it's date night, you know, no. So how do you, you know, space, how do you space them out though? When you're setting the appointments, typically I try, I try and get them to like, I try and get people to do it at like 10 or 11 in the morning because that kind of gives me the rest of the day. If somebody else comes in, I can say, hey, bro, I got from, you know, one o'clock on. And then if they come in and say, oh, OK, I can do it at one. Great. Because if the guy was right. at 10, then that gave me like three hours. It's probably not going to be three hours. Um, and then I try not to do anything at night because. um because, you know, Jess comes home around 4.30 or 5 and, and you know, I, I want to, you know, be able to hang out with her, even though right now she'd roll her eyes if she was here. Uh, and she'd be like, I'm rolling my eyes. You're spending your time with me. Um, so, but I, you know, I, I try because well, still I, I have to, then I have to finish. I have to send emails. I have to listen. I'm, I'm trying to get spot, get sponsored by Ghost. So, yeah, I put the filter on. Oh, there you go. Uh, uh, there. <laughs> man look hold on oh it so, softens the nice the sponsoring by ghost would that would that come like would that be direct or would that be through um youtube no no like what would happen is ghost would say okay listen you know four times a month you have to say, you have to cover this. And then they give you, well, it depends. They have different things. Sometimes they'll give you an actual script where you have to say, you know, I love Ghost. It's the best energy drink out there. I, you know, it has, it's high in whatever and no sugar. Like they'll actually have something you have to say, which I'm almost, I'm really bad at that. But <laughs> if they just say, look, we want you to promote it and just cover this, like kind of, we don't care how you say it. Just say that you like the drink. It's one of the, one of the best ones you've ever, you've drank, you know, whatever. I'm better at that because I can I can ad lib. And the truth is, I don't even, listen. If they just send me free ghost, that you'd be you know. happy. What flavor is that pink can? Um, <laughs> this is sour pink lemonade, which you you know who loves this one? Uh, Jax. Jax. No Jax. Jax. Oh yeah. This is the new flavor. It's not great. It, it's not my favorite. It's not horrible, but it's not my favorite. Jax was like, you got to order them, bro. They're amazing. They're not amazing. They're, they're okay, but they're not my favorite. Okay. Is, is oh. that the, is that the one, um, did that the one I tried? Mm -mm. No, I'm trying to figure out no, what, I think you, what I are think. the, what are the flavor options? Oh, I mean, they have like, um, cream. Oh gosh. Is it cream sickle? Love it. Yeah. That's, that one's my favorite. That one's my favorite. Tropical something else is my favorite is another good one. Those two are the best. I think the one you tasted was like Sour Patch. Was oh, it Sour yeah. Patch? Oh, yeah. Yep. So you've All been buying those by the... By the oh, I, I don't even go to... I didn't, even, I didn't even go... Now I just order the cases. I just order like two cases of them. And they show up. So that, that's how I'm doing it now. So. Oh, okay. But they're still like $2.40 a piece. Wow. Yeah. So I only that, drink them... What, what what's the other one that that I I've been drinking? Um, is it like Red Bull or is it like an energy drink? It's an energy drink, but it's flavored. It's it's in the skin skin. It's in the skinny type can. It's um, uh, Monster. No, not Monster. Um, uh, I don't see. I don't know enough of them. I only know like the really it starts with an I. I think. Um, shoot, I'll bet. 15 people will say it in the comment section. We'll know in yeah, about, good, about a week. Good, good. Help me out because I cannot remember it. They're, they're the ones that kind of got the real fruit juice. They don't have much sugar in them. They're not, they're not bad. I'm not a, I'm not a fruit juice. I'm not a um, energy drink fan, you know? No, me neither. I hate all of them except for this one. That's why I want to get sponsored. 
because I can't stand any of them. Except for that one. Yeah, this is the only one. So, all right. So, wait, real quick. We're both, we both need guests. Yes. You're looking for guests. Guest suggestion. Right. Guest suggestion. And you're, you're, so I'm going to make sure that I put, um, I'm gonna make sure I put your email address in the, in the, in the description box. Okay. And I'm obviously I'm going to put my description, you know, or my email in the description box. I actually have a form that you can fill out. Nobody fills out the form. They just email. I don't know why. A guest form? Yeah. We, Colby actually hooked up a guest form where you can fill out this thing and it's, it sends it to. I want to say it sends it to Colby or me. And then it, it and it, it's real quick. It's like, here's your name, number. And then you can write a little thing. It's basically an email, but people could just email me. Okay. So, you know, I'm okay with that. Like, I, I just need help getting guests. And, and what's so funny is a lot of people, they don't think they even have a story. They're like, eh, you know, I robbed like 20 banks and I, you know, went to jail. I, I only did a couple, I only did like four years or three years and it. And they'll, they're sitting there, you hear them talk, and they're like, oh, it's no big deal. It's, I don't even think it's a story. And then you interview them, and you're like, bro, you got a great story. <laughs> Jumping over the counter and, and you know, staking out the bank and getting a, getting an employee in the bank that told them when the cash drawer was going to be there. And you're oh, like, those oh, are what's awesome. going on? Those are awesome. You, you know, um, you have the unique – so this gives the opportunity because, you know, in prison, you know, I, I did do the lawyering thing. Right. Right. And I get stuck there. And a lot of times when they would talk to me, they would try to give me the perception that they were innocent. You know, oh, yeah. so they're like, oh, somehow because I had one guy was telling me about the, a, a, a robbery and he's kind of like, oh, it wasn't me. But they're thinking this. And I, you know, what I'm saying his fingerprints was on the gun that they found at the scene. He just happened to walk. He just happened to walk in the bank to open an account right and gun dropped and i picked it up because i didn't want a child <laughs> to get a hold exactly. of the gun exactly so exactly my so, pocket exactly. so you get you yeah you get the story where they're actually um because i get the people who are very timid about you know their culpability in the offense. no <laughs> you no. know i'm like no, come I get on the guys man. who are like you know like people just because you admit to it people are not coming to grab you like hey you got on there you said you did this you know we ain't got no evidence but we're gonna take your word for it and lock you up <laughs> um yeah i definitely definitely need listen i have a guy had a guy the other day that you know he didn't like he he had admittedly he said look i've done a bunch of, bunch of knucklehead stuff you know didn't make a ton of money sold drugs you know uh just he, and he, he said it was, it was just a bunch of knucklehead stuff like it was not nothing insane, you know, but I, I'm, I'm a good storyteller and people love to hear me tell these stories. And I, I, I'm, I'm not far from you. I'll drive over there. And we talked for about 30 minutes. He kind of gave me the quick rundown. I was like, listen, you're, I can tell you're a good storyteller. Like definitely come, let's do it. Listen, that, I think that guy got like 30 or 40,000 views and it was like a two and a half, three hour podcast. He was great. Wow. That's like impressive. people, people think like, oh, I didn't steal $10 million or I, I don't, it, it, people don't realize, look, Boziak, well, Boziak, I, I did, I wrote his story. Like he didn't steal the most money. He just had this really, really unique, interesting, super interesting case. And I've had right. a, this guy, Doug Dodd. I wrote a, a book about Doug Dodd. He didn't sell the most pills. He didn't make millions of dollars. He didn't. He didn't do anything that all the that tons of other people were doing at the time. Right. But it was an interesting story. He was willing to tell it. There, there was kind of interesting because it was a group of five guys that were on the wrestling team that were doing this. So that made it kind of cool. And how and it was just like how they slowly figured out the system and how much they were getting for the pills and how they were shipping them. So it was interesting, but it was a story that. That tons of guys tell you in prison, but nobody writes it down. So people don't see it. So people right. out there don't see it, and there's no format for it to be on. Then, then when you write it down, suddenly people read that story and they go, "Bro, this is amazing!" Really? Because I can talk to forty guys right now in the combat that have almost the identical story, but they never wrote it down. Right. So yeah, that's so. It's the same thing with these guys that are they watch the thing and they they think, man, I. 
I think I got a good story, but you know, like I didn't steal millions. I didn't make millions. I wasn't the biggest drug dealer. I wasn't the biggest. I only robbed four banks. I, yeah, but I'll, I'll bet you some stuff happened and I'll bet you. Right. Not, and, and, you know? and, and all, all of that stuff is interesting. People don't, don't understand it. It's not all about what, what, what you stole and taken. And, and then a lot of, a lot of times people who stole a lot, their story isn't that interesting. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, I talked to a girl that, that did Medi- Medicare fraud and her story wasn't that interesting. Right. You know? Remember I was talking to Doc. Doc was in, well, it was interesting when we were reading his PSI, you know, it's yeah. like, ooh, interesting. The, the, the <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> With the pill on her. Oh, it was like. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I'll never yes. forget that because you started shaking your head and you went, listen to this. <laughs> you were like, this is bad. This is bad. But, hey, he was, hey, it was a, uh, um, a pill mill. Yeah. You know, he was, but un- you like the part un- where un- he just come in and he just touched the throat for a second. Yeah. Eh, 600 pills. <laughs> you Roxy. definitely need oxygen. 600 Roxy. Yeah. yeah. Are you feeling anxious at all? Um, I don't know. I guess a little bit. We'll give you some Xanax too. That's right. Hey, <laughs> That oxy, we'll give you some Xanax to offset the oxycodone. We got you. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so he was a generous, Doc was a generous guy. He was a generous guy. You know what, what's so funny is I, I really believe that in his heart, he doesn't think he did anything wrong. No. No. You well, know? you know, it's funny too about him. Remember how, remember his hands and used to turn blue? Yes. I was telling somebody about that the other day and he didn't want to get treated for it. Right. Wasn't he like, Eventually, it'll kill me, and that's exactly what he used to say. Yeah, that used to be that used to hurt me the most, you know, because it's like you want to die. He's kind of like, like, all right, if I'm not getting out of here unless some miracle happens, and otherwise, then I just want to die. Right. You know, just let me die in here. Yeah, it was. He was a grumpy, bitter old guy that you really couldn't argue against being grumpy and bitter. You're like, and I hear you. (laughs) <laughs> like I want to say, oh, you've got a lot to live for. You don't. And, dying, and you know, he, miserable. he died in. I think I looked him up. I think he died in 12, 20, 2012. Oh, that wasn't no. that long after I left. No, no, it wasn't. God, and was he was a medium. Like he never should have been at the medium. No, he shouldn't have. He, he was definitely a, a low guy. Well, but but you know, he like I think some 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 higher. Some influential people had got some of his drugs, so I think. Right. Well, yeah, and, and he he went to trial, and he got what thirty years or something like that. Yes, twenty five. Thirty five. Twenty five. Oh, twenty five. Yeah. He said he's not doing twenty five. Yeah, I think he had done two. Jesus. He used to have his own office. He. Yeah, yeah. Some reason they took him out of that office. Why? He was sitting. Remember. He was helping people. He was kind of helping tutor people, right? Yes. Kind of <laughs> bitter, bitterly, but kind of. So yes. So so if if you were to, so let me ask a question. Yeah. If if you were to to ask, like like let's say the people who watch your podcast, what scenario would you want them to step step forward? It, it, have they ever like? Would you say, hey, have you ever done some sneaky? <laughs> stuff that you kind of got away with you know a long time ago you know let me know put a comment down and let me know i'd like to hear about it what would you how would you like what would you like to submerge from this um i think you mean emerge um yeah you're right, right. emerge not right. Submerge. Yeah, submerge is to go under <laughs> yeah they're already besides me what would you like to submerge no but go ahead <laughs> um i think yeah i think you know, so guy, people with interesting stories that can tell their stories that, you know, like maybe their friends and family have told them they've got an interesting story. Uh, it doesn't have to be huge. I mean, if it's huge, great. If it's not huge, it doesn't matter. Uh, I, I've had, you know, like, obviously, I love it. I, I like the fact I like when they've already, of course, been arrested, gone to jail. Like if you, you know, or unless it's requisite. Uh, well, no, because think about it. What if they, what if they ran a scam and it's, you know, 10 years ago and they never did get in trouble? Like, you know, right. the, most statute of limitations, there's about five years. So, you know, if you feel comfortable, you know, coming and, and telling that story, then that's great. 
Uh, but for the most part, what I feel gives people the credibility is the fact that they did go to prison. So if you come on here and just tell me some fantastical <laughs> story, then it's like, how do I, how do I, how do I know that's true? Like, I, I, there's nothing for me to check. I can't read an article. I can't check Pacer. You were never arrested. How do I know that's true? So it, it, it's, it's, you know, and listen, some people have told me like, a whole story. And then they're like, and I ended up getting arrested for this, like, which is only one small part of the whole story. Like they never got arrested for this. They end up getting arrested for this. They go to jail for five years and they got out and they never got arrested for the, the crux of the story, but that's fine. I can't prove that you're the one telling the story. And on top of that, you did end up going to prison for this. So clearly you were involved in criminal conduct. Right. And you can, let's face it. If somebody starts talking to you about fraud pretty quickly, you know, no, or they start so, talking to you about drugs pretty quickly. You're like, no, no. Obviously, if someone's arrested for something, it, it's not because they begin to dabble. You know, generally they're they've gotten the cycle down. Like I'd say, you know, only two out of a hundred may have done one thing wrong and got caught for it. A lot of times, yeah, they, yeah, they, most people are getting away with it for a long, 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 long time. They, they've been they've been sliding past on some stuff for a long, long time to, to the point where they actually think it's legal. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, well, this must not be illegal. I've been doing it for years. <laughs> I, I remember Bo, Boziak told me a story one time about getting caught in the mall with a fake ID. He had the fake ID, he used a credit card, had a fake ID with it and realized that they were calling, like they were calling the police, they were calling like security or whatever. So he turns around and bolts, he starts to bolt and the security grabs him and they pull him in. He's like, so he said, all the videos that I'd seen online said that if that security could not detain you, like if you pulled away and fought with them, they'd let you go. And if they didn't catch you with the actual merchandise, they had no right to detain you and they would let you go. And, and I was like, right. He, he is. That's not true. <laughs> he was like, he, was like, he, was like, he weighed he weighed 140 pounds he's a little or 130 pounds soaking wet five foot seven five eight they grabbed him he's skinny little kid they grabbed him handcuffed him brought him he said they walked me into this door he's like and there's all these hallways in yes. the mall that he's like he's like that i didn't even know where there you're like you're looking down these hallways he's like like there are hundreds of feet you're like wow it's bizarre there's all this whole thing back there so they maze, walked him. maze. Right. I've been back there. I've been back there. But go ahead. So they walk him to security. They handcuff him. He ends up pulling his hand out of the out of the the loop. Climbs up in the in the um uh the drop ceiling. Crawls out of the little security. He actually cuts a hole in the drywall with his key because he said the drywall went all the way up to the ceiling. But he said, but I knew on the other side of the wall, there was a, um, a hallway. So he, he, with his Cadillac key, he just scraped it and scraped it. And he was like, it was like, it was like four layers of wall. And so I cut it and cut it and cut it and cut it. And then eventually pulled it out, climbed through it, dropped into the hallway and got away. And, and I'm like, so I'm, he was telling me this story and, you know, he said, oh, I'm, I've got dust everywhere. It's all over me. I'm, I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm, I'm, I've got, you know, he's like, I'm, I'm in bad shape. He ends up finding an exit gets out on the, of the exit, finds his car. He was like, he's like, I got into my car and drove across the street and parked my car. Got, he said, I dusted off and everything. By this point, I feel like I've kind of dusted myself off. He goes, I was so shaken by the whole thing. He said, I went into the, this 7-Eleven or whatever, got a beer, walked back to his car, got in his car, sat there and was drinking the beer and a cop pulled up right next to him. And he said, the cop like just looked over at him like, what are you doing? Like he's sitting there like, oh man, cop arrested him for an open container, put him in the back of the car. And while he's getting, writing up the report, he said, you could hear them describing me on the radio. And he said, cop cars, sheriff deputies are like driving by going to the mall, looking for him. He's wow. like, I kept, he said, he's like, I kept waiting for the cop to turn around and look at him and say, Hey, that's, you know, like, Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> Keep in mind, you know, 
he said he was, but he never did. He actually drove him to the police station, booked him. He got right back out like the next day or whatever it was. Um, and went straight for, back. Got his for open container. That's a misdemeanor. He probably got, he probably got released on his own recognizance. Yeah. He got released right away, went back, got his car and left. Um, but it was so funny because when I was doing all the freedom of information acts, I found that report. You know oh, what I'm saying? Really? So it's like that report doesn't, it doesn't substantiate that, that the thing in the mall happened because he never got caught for the thing in the mall. It never caught up with him. Obviously, they have an ID with a different name on it, credit cards with different names. And the, granted, there is a picture, right. but they never put it together. Uh, but what I, what I could prove was that the, at least part of that story is able to be proven because I got the, the open container, you know, and that... 7-Eleven was across the street from like the gallery mall. Right. So you, those are things you can prove. Correct. Um, so it's like, you know, p- some people will tell a story and maybe, you know, like some stuff, you, you know, you just got away with like, I, like that never caught up with me. I never, I, I, there's nothing there. There's nothing to prove. There's nothing to track down. So I, I think that people, a lot of people think that they have to have some massively huge, amazing story. But the truth is, if you take 10 or 20 years of someone's criminal history, so somebody's been doing crimes on and off for 20 years, and you condense that into an hour or a two hour podcast, you're going to have some good stories. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. That's going to be interesting. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, you know, I just think people, they, you know, and then there are, listen, there are other people that have just have over the top, amazing stories. <laughs> too. So there, you know. period. Yeah, period. period. Yeah, there are. There are. <laughs> just, just from from what what they what what they've accomplished and what they've done. Yes, I I agree. Um, I've heard quite a bit of them, like when I was in there. You know, so um, and and some of it's impressive. Some of it's been Im- impressive. Um, it's just gotta wish you could bring them bring it to life. You know, well, uh, I wish yesterday would have been recorded. You know, because that that was fun. <laughs> oh the talking to the woman yes right. the, the the mother of of somebody i was helping out you know because her, her daughter's a her daughter was a, a rapper right and um who was with they were they had planned uh i told you about her icy blue her and vanilla ice who had never met were going to do a tour together like they were like this is going to be on and popping um, it, dude, interesting from beginning to end, bro. She quit, like she disappeared on everybody, because she was supposed to get a part in the movie Sister Act. And when she like everything had came to her, huh? I think you did tell me that about this. Everything came to her very easy, right? I'm when she gets out, I'm gonna interview her. That's only like in two years, but everything came to her very easy, right? And she never got denied, and she went for the Sister Act part and thought she was gonna get it. And she didn't get it. And so she took a flight to Austin to stay with her um, grandmother. She didn't tell anybody. It's like just disappeared. Like when they're like, no, you didn't get the part. She like just and left and flew to live with her grandmother. Didn't tell anybody where she was. Got a job in a convenience store. Like you had a contract to perform with Vanilla Ice. You were on tour with Color Me Bad and CC Music Factory. What was she doing? She was just upset about it. Yeah, like I didn't get that part. What? <laughs> Something else. Exactly. Exactly. Like I would love to hear her philosophy behind that. Like, like it's just, but it, it's. I had no idea it was that inch. I knew it was going to be partially interesting. I had no idea it was that interesting. You know what I'm saying? And that's just the mother's perception. You know, I like to hear it from hers. So yeah. it, it, it's one of those things where that surprised me. Some stories, you know, um, I'm going to say, I don't know, I thought would be interesting and, and, it, and it was not, you know, like I talked to someone that was um, doing the credit card, uh, the, the skimmers, and he was with a group with the, but with the skimmers. But I think like he made himself out to be higher up than what he was. Like he didn't, he wasn't honest about his story. 
So right. it, it just like you were higher up, but you know, you didn't have access to certain things. So I could just tell you were like a runner, you know? And, and so, because you weren't honest about it, it you, the, the good stories wouldn't come out. So it would, it, you know, you really want someone that's like humbled and, and realized like, Hey, this is what I did. You know, I wasn't, like you said, I wasn't the grandiose. I wasn't stealing millions. You know, my, my crime didn't make television, but here's what was going on. That makes a very interesting story because yeah, the, you, the, you don't know what these guys have going on. They, they could have super cool backgrounds. You know, I was dating this girl and here's what, like, listen, some of the guys, they, they could tell you that what was going on with their relationship might, might have been just as interesting right. as, as what was going on with the actual, you know, their, their crime, their the crime spree or, you know, whatever it was, you know, criminal, um, the criminal enterprise that they were running, maybe, you know, you know, I was dating this girl and this is what was going on. And this, I remember Carrie, I, I, I wrote this story called uh, American narco. And I remember he had, he had like fallen in love just before, like probably six months to a year before. And he's like, I mean, we were, he was like, we were so over the top in love. And when he got in trouble, she had agreed that if he got less than, I think it was like seven years, she would wait for him. Like they would get married and she'd wait for him. This is federal? This is federal? This is federal. Oh. And he got, and I think he got 11 years. <laughs> and At seven and, years, two months, but go ahead. Yeah. And I remember he, he is, he's like, a, he's like, like I, it wasn't the, the 11 years. He said, it just crushed me that I knew. I just lost her. He's like, and I remember when they said it, I, he turned around and he just looked right at her and she was just bawling to her, you know, crying. And he's like, cause we both knew like, that's, that's it. Like, cause they figured, you know, seven years plus art app, plus this, plus that, plus time. He'd already said, you know, the, the whole thing, you broke it down. I can do this. Right. You know, whether she would have or not, who knows, but it was an interesting, there was, you know, he, all of these relationships he had with these girls kind of during the course of this story was pretty cool. Like there, there are some cool background stories. I really need to focus more on, or, or bring up like who you were. So who are you dating at the time? I need to focus on that more on, on who they were seeing. Yeah. Some Is of those that are, how you got like, that story out of um, Jax about the, the chick. No, I think Jax just came. Listen, Jack, you don't need to oh. prompt Jax. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Because, because because you're absolutely right. That would be interesting. Like who, at the time you were committing this crime, who were you dating? And, right. and what, the, what they knew, whether, did you hide this from them? You know, the, the process of trying to keep things from, from who you're dating is, is amazing. Well, and, and what happened? Like what happens when you come home with a lick, right? Like what happens if you burglarize you a laid. jewelry store? You get laid. Uh, <laughs> A jewelry store and you walk in and your girl knew you were out and you, you come in and you dump a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars in, in diamonds on the bed and start breaking them up. Like, what's that conversation like? Like, you know, <laughs> what are you doing, honey? Yeah. You, yeah. Or, you know, or what else is, down and you know what's like, interesting? Oh. You know what I find interesting? And, and it's probably because it's probably because part of my story is when you and the significant other, e even in your story, when I think about it, at the, the point where you both realize you're willing to commit crime, you know, like you're doing stuff and then the other person, you're kind of like, look, this is what's going on. And then, you know, that like that coming together of the like. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. That, that dance. Huh? That dance. That dance. <laughs> you know, I was thinking. What were you, you know, because when, when you were talking about that, like that's one of my that's part that's one of my favorite parts when you were like, I'm I'm leaving, I'm wanted, you know, and she's like, I'm coming with you, and you're kind of like, what? Oh yeah, there was no, yeah, and I was like, Look, I'm not going to get a job. Like, that yeah, that's yeah, that's her coming to, and, and you're kind of like, um what? <laughs> yeah, no, that was Becky, Becky, Becky was all in. Yes, all in. And and would you have known that? No, I don't I don't think I saw that coming. You know, like who does that? Yeah. Like I didn't want to leave. Like I don't want to leave and I have to leave. You don't have to leave. Why would you leave? <laughs>
and you're trying to talk her out of it. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, you know, but think about like, to me, the, it was the, the mindset of that, the, the fact that you, cause like in, in all honesty, like if you look back, like if you could go back in time, you'd be like, no, you probably wouldn't even tell her you're leaving. You're like, no, I what are you doing? I'm, I'm going to Jacksonville for two days. <laughs> I'll be back Sunday. Can you feed the cat, please? You know, what yeah, I'm I told her like my uncle died or something. Yeah, that's it. You know, and and just think about the fact that it, there was a part of you that was kind of like, like here are the consequences, and she's still like, yeah, uh, yeah, and you're kind of like, what the hell? Oh, I remember. You know, her, her biggest question was, can you get the money? Are you going to be able to get money? And I was like, oh, absolutely. That's like, that's not a problem. I just do understand that we're going to be wanted. And she's like, yeah, I don't care about that. She's like, you're, you're, you're going to be able to get the money. How much are you going to get? I'm like, I mean, I don't know, a few million within a few months, I guess. And probably, I don't know. And, you know, and she was just like, uh, then I want to come. I'll come. I want to, I was like, Jeez. <laughs> for, for me, um, we're, 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 I told you the story. We're dating, and I'm scamming, you know, and because she, because she's kind of like, she's answering my phone, or I get a phone call, you know, and this guy is saying, "Hey, I need minutes," you know, like I need more minutes, and she's asking me. She's like, "Why would these people call you for phone minutes?" You know, and I tried to lie, like, "Oh, you know, I'm able to get the cards at a discount." <laughs> People, you know, they reach out to me. I, yeah. yeah I can get he's a discount prison. on the cards. You could have said he's in, he's, in, he's a buddy of mine. He's in prison. I have to put money, phone card. You, you could have said prison. You can't go well, get I it. I got to put it well, on. No, no, no. These were drug dealers out on the street. I, I was, I was using card numbers. I know, but she doesn't know that. You could have Correct. said he was right. locked up. He's got a, he's got a, he's got a um, contraband cell phone. And I am, he's a buddy of mine. And I put money, put uh -oh. on it. No, that that wasn't gonna fly. She no. knew they were because she she seen me pick up. Like I went to see them and they gave me money. Oh, okay. you know, so she yeah. had been with me, you know. But I never told her what was it for. She's just like, oh, okay. But then when she's like, why are they calling you for a minute? And then when I told her what I was doing, she's kind of like, like my like my God, like we can expand this, you know. It's just the the, the dance of the 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 middle. Yeah, she, you're th you, she immediately says, you know what we need to do? We need to start adding zeros. We can, <laughs> exactly. we can go. I know people like. Exactly. And, and so that is an excellent question for your guests of, you know, who you were dating at the time. What was their philosophy behind it? And when did you tell them? Like, t tell me the story about when you, you know, brought this to their attention. That's, that's. Uh, I don't know how you could, how anybody could get away with not telling their wives, I mean, or their girlfriends or whatever, because listen, they're, they're all so inquisitive and just suspicious. And like, I, how, how do you get away with it from, for like, by listen, by the time the chicks around a lot, like it's over. I mean, I, you understand that I'm sitting here. I live, I live with Jess. We're married. And if I get a, 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 a text, bring she from across the room will be like, who's Rachel? Like, who's what? I, it's in my hand. I'm like, and I'm going, who? I can't even see it. She's across the room. Who's Rachel? I'm like, I don't know. Hold on. Well, why is she emailing you at, at, <laughs> at 1030 at night? I don't, I haven't even seen the phone, the text yet. Like, it's, it's, it depends on the, the man. Honestly, because it, it some some men just don't have to answer. Some men just do not have to answer to, to their woman. Some, and like I do what I want to do, I leave when I want to leave, oh, and no. I come back. You know, and but some, and 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 that's that's the difference. And and that's why it would be interesting for you to ask because some people have a relationship where like no, she had no idea what I was doing. I was selling methamphetamine. I had a a, a, a grow house or whatever. And my girl had no idea what was going on. And and some of them like choose to turn a blind eye. Like, I'm just not going to pay that any attention. You know, right. as long as the money's coming, it's fine. You know, so. 
It, it, that's why it's an interesting concept to, to ask of guests, you know, to find out because it's kind of like opens up the door to something like, hmm, how did you get away with that? Like, yeah. how, how is it that she didn't ask you? Yeah. And that adds like a, another, it, it, it could, first of all, it gives me more content. That might be an extra 10 minutes. It might be an extra 30. Like I have, I meet guys all the time and I'll talk to them. They're like, bro, like my story, it's maybe maybe 20 minutes and i'm like 20 minutes like my, yeah my crime is just all i did was this and this and you're like okay i understand but you do understand we're not going to start with the first bank you robbed we're going to start with so you were born in michigan what was that like <laughs> your parents were school teachers oh okay were you good in school like it's 15 minutes before i told you this I, i've said this a few times I, th I think i've told you this some guy in the comment section the other day said if Matt Cox was interviewing Jesus Christ, his first question would be, so where are you born? Siblings, yes. <laughs> parents? I was like, like, I understand it's, it's, you know, but you know, you, you start at the beginning. So right. if I, but, but let's face it, if it. So to me, now I'm asking that question. So it's going to be 20 minutes before we even get to, before you're out of high school. Yeah. I definitely think I need to start asking more about like, who are you dating? Like, what was she thinking? What was this? But some of these guys too, man, they're, they're, they're in and out of girlfriends. Like. Definitely. Yeah. And, and their crime might have something to do with it. You know, it, you tell a little bit about their, you find out a little bit more about their inter workings by asking about their girlfriend. Yeah. That's a good idea. Do you have anything like we haven't like covered or. I, I mean, think? this was a fly by the seat of our pants type of podcast, you know, like just to show that we could put something together and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I do have another thing that I need to, to mention just in case if anybody, I don't think anybody else has would probably have gotten this far on the podcast, but let's pretend for a minute that somebody has gotten this far that they've actually watched this whole thing. If they have, I am currently looking for an, Somebody that can run, I have a clips channel that started off and it's actually like it's monetized. It makes money, very little money, probably 80 or a hundred bucks a month. If, if that might be, might be 75 because we haven't uploaded anything in forever, but I need somebody who can take my full length content, my, my two and three hour videos and trim it down, trim, t take pieces of it out and make clips and put it on the clip channel. And like, I'll work out a deal where they'll get, you know, the bulk of the money coming off of that clips channel. So I, I just need somebody to do that because I've got this channel that's fully monetized and it's, right. it's making money right now. Like every couple of months I get a check cut to me for no reason. If somebody actually started going through and just trimming these things down and sticking them on there, it would, it may be making a few hundred dollars in a, in a, in a month or two. They have to have a little computer expertise, right? They, they need to be obviously, yeah, they need to be able to, to edit, you know, like they can download the videos. Uh, we can, we can send them the videos and they can trim them down. They could, you know, run them through a filter, do whatever they want to do to them, put them up, put up like a 15 minute, you know, portion of this, this story, a 10 minute one of this one, a 20 minute of this one, and just post them once or twice a week. But I mean, you never, the thing is, is not the 15 minute videos. They'll sometimes they'll get a whole bunch of views. Right. So you don't know, you know, that channel could end up blowing up, but I mean, I really just, the guy that was running it basically just didn't want to run it anymore. I think that he was a, a younger kid and he stopped doing it. We just never really picked it up and ran with it. Right. But I definitely, it, it's sitting there and I think it'd be great if I could find somebody that could, could do that, that would do it, you know, and really like really do it, not do it for two months and say, oh, I'm not interested. But but um, I've seen in my email, I've gotten a couple of people offering to make shorts out of my um, video. Like, hey, you need someone to edit your videos, you know. Um, right, but they want to get paid, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you want people to do it for nothing. Just notoriety no, I, of it. No, no. I want them to do it for a portion of the monetization. Oh, okay. So like okay. you can get the – like I'll give you 75% of whatever the channel makes, that sort of thing. Or, hey, you can take – all of what the channel makes up to two thousand dollars, or like if because let's face it, it'll take them a year or two to build it up to that much, right? But all they're doing is downloading the videos that are on my main channel and then cutting them up, saying, "Hey, this is a good story. It's about twelve minutes. I'll turn that into a video. Put that up." 
and you know, what do you do? You, you go work out and listen to the video. And when you're working out, you say, oh, you know what? That was a good story. That's at 52 minutes. And it went to, you know, one hour and 12 minutes. Okay, great. That's a 20 minute video. I'll go home and edit it. Clip, 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 make a little, make a little um, thumbnail and put it up there. You do that twice a week. Who knows what'll happen with that channel? Right. So if anybody's out there that knows somebody or is interested, I'm not paying anybody. I'm not paying. You got to be able to make a, you got to be able to make your own thumbnail and you have to be able to do some editing and post it. But well, they're making yeah. a thumbnail for you, right? Well, for the channel. Oh. I mean, yeah, it's me. It's my stuff, but they're just, look, a lot of people are interested in running a YouTube channel. They don't want to be in front of the camera. Mm. And if they are already watching my content and think, hey, this guy's got some good stuff, I think I can take some of the longer videos and cut them up into smaller sections and start putting those, then that channel might blow up. You don't know. Right. So somebody might be interested. The problem is what happens is people post for two weeks and then when nothing, when they're only getting 400 video, 400 views or a thousand views, they're like, oh, this is never going to work. Forget it. It's like, okay, bro, go work at McDonald's. <laughs> like if, if that's your Why attitude, but go ahead. <laughs> you know, if that's your attitude, like you're, you're going to have to put in some time. It takes a while for it to take off. Right. So, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. So if anybody's watching, that's, you know, anybody you know. on my side or his side, you can contact me or him and let us know. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to leave the, your, yours and my emails in the description box. Hey, I appreciate you guys watching the conversation. If you're interested in any of the stuff we said or getting in contact with me or Zach in the description box, obviously appreciate you guys watching, hit the bell. And if you're saying, Hey Matt, I don't want to help you. I don't really care, but I would like to support your channel. Please consider joining my Patreon. See ya. I understand you were, um, <laughs> The, at the, uh, accosted uh, <laughs> uh, in the trenches. Yes, yes. This is my Vietnam. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Back, back. Back. Unfortunately, back in the trenches, a couple of bad decisions led to my arrest, and so um, went to jail. Well, got accused. Went to jail. What had, were you charged with? <laughs> uh, theft and 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 checks and and fraud and forgery. That's um, so unlike you. Yeah, definitely. Not even up my alley, you know. So um, end up going to jail. Although this was kind of a misunderstanding. I ended up going to jail. Uh, under, I turned myself in because I was, you know, had the privilege of having a detective not notify me ahead of time. So I worked with my probation officer, turned myself in, knowing that I was facing a violation of my supervised release. Right. So, with so you are currently on federal supervised release. Correct. And the state was investigating you. Right. So, you know, because people are always like, oh, this and that. You know, well, okay, well, there's state and there's federal. So, right. so it was a federal charge that was that you knew was going to violate your probation. Correct. And you could end up going back to prison. Yeah. What like what people don't realize what people don't realize is that you can be on federal probation, get in trouble for something in the state. And then the state can even drop the charges. Like, yeah, you know what? It's a misunderstanding. No big deal. And they let you out. And the feds go, yeah, I just think there wasn't enough to convict him. So we're going to send him to jail for two years. You know, and then suddenly it's like, it's like, what, what just happened? Like, how did I, the state dropped the charges? Why am I now in federal prison? Well, because you violated your federal probation. And you go, yeah, but they dropped the charges. They go, yeah, we don't see it like that. And that's the difference between having your full rights Yes, and ha and not full have freedom and and or being on some sort of, some type of supervision. Yeah, right, you people don't realize. Well, they don't they don't have the right to do it. No, no, they do have the right. You're not. Oh, they have the right to come in your house and dictate right. where, how, and when you live, or where. You know, what I'm saying it's 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 right. It's it's it, it can be frustrating. It's it's difficult. You know, but th this time I'm turning my life around. I'm not really wanting to deal with that. Right. Well, and 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 I kind I kind of got lucky in the sense. Whereas I said it was a misunderstanding. So going in there, I was preparing myself to take this all the way to trial to show my innocence right. in, in hopes of not having to deal with the consequences for the supervised release. Right. So I, I go like, so once I'm in there six months, I figured it would take six months to come to fruition, which is normal. But of course you get a public defender and you know, the public defender extended or waived my right to speedy trial. So I ended up being in there for 13 months right here in the 
Tampa in the Hillsborough County Jail right. fighting my case. So we're going back and forth. They're making offers, great offers, by the way, like, hey, time serve, probation, you know, one year probation, you know, but, time but, serve. And but, I'm like, but that, but you can't take that because you'll get right out on, they, they go, yeah, time served. And they let you out and immediately your probation get for your federal probation gets violated and you go in front of the federal judge and the judge goes, 24 you, months. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, now I'm sitting in your federal prison. For 24 months. Right. And that, that's what was weird because if I beat the charge, I'm only looking at a technical violation and I'm only looking at between 8 and 14 months. If I were to took the felony, then I'm looking at 20, it was 24, 23 to 27 months. So I'm looking at two years. So the whole time I'm thinking it doesn't matter what you guys give me in any plea offer, you know, um, I'm going to end up going to prison for two years if I take anything. Right. So we kind of went back and forth. D- debating the the what charges and what I would take. And I said, nah, I'm just going to go ahead and take it to trial. You know, I think this is a kind of a, a misunderstanding. And, you know, I didn't I did this with consent. And so what happened was as soon as we get to the trial date, they end up making me an offer that I can't refuse, which is like so the day of trial or the week of trial, they made me an offer because I'm like, I'm going to go to trial, beat it and end up with nothing. But the day of tri- <laughs> the day of trial, they come up with an offer like, listen, we're going to drop all the charges, give you a misdemeanor and 30 days in jail time time served. We're going to withhold adjudication on the misdemeanor. So it won't even go on your record. I'm like, are you kidding me? Right. They're like, no, we're not. Right. You're going to get that if you got if you'd gone and won, it would have been. Almost the, the same thing. It's right. really they're basically saying you're not going to get a charge. Right. I'm like, run it. So I took the misdemeanor, which only gave me a technical violation on my supervised release for the feds. Ended up going to the feds and getting that technical violation, getting a year in jail credit for all the time that I had been in jail. And so popped me right back out after 14 months of being away from all of your fans <laughs> right back to your sister's spare room yes yeah <laughs> um lost my vehicle because they they sold it obviously to, to well, actually use it as a trade-in so i had to like try to raise the money to get a 500 hundred dollar clunker right. a 1998 ford escort it's sweet it, oh it it yeah. is sweet. It's in the park. It's it's dripping oil in my in my driveway right That's now. That's the beautiful thing of it. It's actually transmission fluid, so it's more important. So uh <laughs> Um oh my God, my poor my landlord. Um <laughs> Did I tell you that my did I t- my landlord I am sorry, I, I don't know have I ever mentioned this? That so my landlord one day sent me a text that said, Um, I just saw you on a commercial. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, uh, this poor guy. Like, I'm the person you don't want living in your house. Like, he had to be like, is this guy living in my house? What did he do? <laughs> oh, hell no. <laughs> like, it's not like he, he, it's not like regular bank fraud. It's like, this is somebody you don't want around your property. He right. lives in my property. I might have a million dollars in mortgages on my property right now. Right, I might not right. know it. Um, so anyway, yeah, he said that. I was like, oh, man. And I was just about to, to be like, hey, can you can you renew our lease? <laughs> yeah, well, how did you get out of that? No, he did. He did renew it. He, he renewed, renewed it? it? Yeah, he has a sense of humor. He, <clears throat> But I mean, I, I, you know, we never talked about it. Like we'd never, there'd never been any discussion on the, on the subject. So it was fun. So it was funny. But you, so, I was going to say, you had this, a similar type of thing when you started Going oh, for jobs. Man. Well, well, and and the the problem is like having bad choices all your life at some point ends up biting you in the behind, and it does when when you're in your fifties and you're trying to get a regular job. So the whole time I'm in jail, I'm telling myself, "Hey, I get out, I'll go get a job at a Dollar General, Dollar Tree, you know, some place yeah, where they'll a lot hire of people, anybody." Yeah, that, that's right. They'll hire any anybody off the street as long as you're breathing. They'll give you a job. Yeah. So I, I go there and interview. The, the store manager loves me. He's like, you're hired. They do a little quick background check. So I tell him, I say, um, so I got a little fraud in my background. And he's like, eh, it doesn't it bother happens. me. Yeah. He goes, it doesn't bother me. But as long as corporate says I can hire you, I'm going to hire you. 
That's Everybody's said, got some fraud. There you go. Colby's got some fraud. <laughs> no, he doesn't. I'm not not in his back. In his, in his, in his, think, his for, you look at his future, not his background. Colby's, so, yeah. <laughs> Colby's, never, Colby's <laughs> probably never got a traffic. Have you ever got a traffic ticket? One time. Yeah, I what? You're like, <laughs> they, they converted you that quick? <laughs> so, so, so I, I go to Dollar General, apply. He runs my background check. And it actually comes back partially. It, it only comes back with a crime that I committed back when I was in living in Texas. Right. And, and so it, it came up that it was a, it was a theft back then. And it came up with a another crime I committed in Hills in Hillsborough County back in um, 2001. Those are the only two crimes that came up, and they were theft. And they still wouldn't hire me. Dollar General was kind of like, okay, so yeah, we hire felons, but just not your type of felon. You know, we're looking for people with a. And it was a, that old. It was that old. And they still said no. And they still said no. Dollar General. Dollar General. Who would have thought? I mean, I I haven't been in a Dollar General and didn't think I was was not being dealt with by a felon. There's not one time I haven't been in there going, this guy has definitely got felony. Think about all the times you went into to Dollar General with coupons and and thought to yourself, I'm better than this, but you're not. (laughs) You're not. I absolutely am not. That's what this is proof. You have a letter that says it. I have I have (laughs) proof that I'm not Dollar General worthy. That I'm worth less than Dollar General. So, (laughs) what was was that the only? Yeah, I'll, I'll take one. Got me on the way out. Can here, give me. Can we have one? Peanut butter or peppermint? No, I don't want a cookie. I'm you proud. don't want a cookie? No, I'm kind of full. I ain't like a pig. The, the Girl Scouts are out there wandering about. Are no, they? No, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. I know it's good, and those are the good ones. Those are the good ones. Okay. So right. and so so then so then did you? So then what? You just gave up? Went straight back to fraud. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, no, okay. No, I'm Sorry. not going back to fraud. All right. No. So what so, happened then? <laughs> so uh, at, at that point, I I had tried um, Dollar General. I also applied at Lowe's, and I and I applied at Home Depot. All of those three companies, by chance, use the same background checking company called First Advantage or something. And First Advantage, I think they denied me for Dollar General. Just basically told the other companies like, hey. This guy's a piece of shit, like right off the bat. So I was denied from all those spots. I was going to go try and apply at Walmart, and they gave me a first advantage form to fill out, and I'm just like, uh, never mind. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> I want to catch the next bus. That, that's right, yeah. Not, <laughs> that, that's, that's not going to work. I um, applied for a job at the Spectrum Cable. So all the jobs I interviewed for, I was hired. The, the people interviewed me, say, we love you. We want you to come on board. But we have this little background check thing. And, and that's what's been the block. Every, every background check basically gets them to call and say, don't ever come on our property again, please. But what about, <clears throat> what, what about I've done my time? You've served your time. That's, that's only for Match.com. So listen, <laughs> <clears throat> that doesn't apply to any, any and most jobs in Florida. And, and Florida allows them to go back as far as they want to. Other states have like New York, California, some of those liberal states have limitations on how much you're going to hold against them. Florida's kind of like, hey, whatever they did, make them deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> so so it that's, that's what I've been dealing with. So it's been kind of hard to get employment. You know, I've been living off family and, and friends, you know, and associates, you know, just to, to get by. I finally got lucky and landed a job just basically – um, emailing out retainers for people who are in class action lawsuits. So what I do is I kind of call people who've mentioned something about like Roundup or or different products or class action suits that are going on, and I ask them, you know, if they're interested in going ahead and retaining this attorney. If they are, then I send them a, an email them a retainer form, help them fill it out online, do that DocuSign, right. and once they do it, they they get it. So. I've kind of got a work from home job that started off that actually didn't want a background check because I'm only dealing with emails and and certain people. So it's going it's going pretty good. I'm starting off. I'm, I'm you know, I'm still kind of struggling, you know, because obviously I start off in a hole because I get out. I've lost everything. I got to get clothing. You know, um, I've, I got to finish paying off this little inexpensive car I have car insurance. 
cell phone and all those other n- normal bills. But, you know, it's, it's my goal to kind of get back, maybe start my own channel, talking a little bit about some of the people I've met in, in all of my wayward journeys in life. Because I met some characters, especially this time around right. in jail, people who aren't quite as famous with their crimes as some people who I've been on their podcast. <clears throat> well, but that, I was going to say, there's the one guy that, what, that you told me about earlier about um the guy he was all over tampa all over the news he the, oh, the yeah. guy who killed his girlfriend yes and he just gotten out for trying to kill his previous girlfriend yes is that the same guy that's the same guy uh, well yeah well oh, mur- murder is is popular i, I guess it, <laughs> everybody's doing it <laughs> yes I, i've met a lot of people who have but i, I don't know i don't eh, he's he's famous i think he's more famous for the publicity they gave the crime more than what he did. You know what I'm saying? It was a, it was a jealous boyfriend in a fit of rage, but like, I can't wait to even tell yeah, you about this. Yeah. Guy. But, but that was the, not, it, it, okay. It'd be one thing if it was, it was a fit of rage. It never happened before. There was, he'd never broken yeah. the law. It was, she was driving him nuts. And in a fit of rage, he, you know, whatever he chopped her head off. Cause that happens. <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many times, um, you think about yeah, it, you know. Ooh, <laughs> if I had a butcher knife, <laughs> but um, but he'd just gotten out of prison for trying to. Well, he stabbed this uh, previous. Yes, he. So being in jail with him, he did dis- display some of those tendencies of cutting off the other inmates' heads. <laughs> no, he was kind of the Mister Rogers type of of killer. Oh. You know, like he was the type of person he's that such a quiet neighbor. Yeah, well, a good, yeah and very, a, very agreeable, nice boy. very agreeable, even in disagreements. You know, like you, you might come to him and and say, you know, a a a, a, a bud, you know, do me a favor. What's you, his, you, what was his name? His name was Matthew Terry. Nice, Matthew Terry. He's all over. <laughs> you could play like a clip, like if you popped in a clip, because he's all over the news, all over the news right now. Matthew Terry, I mean, well, well, he he already went to trial and lost, right? He went to trial and lost. He was facing the death. What was unique about him is DeSantis replaced the Hillsborough County. Because they wouldn't put the death penalty on him. And she was put in the place at 12 midnight on a day. And by four in the morning, she had changed his case from not seeking the death penalty to seeking the death penalty. Like as if that was part of the the agreement, <laughs> the agreement to put there was her no in place. Agreement? I've been bitching and moaning about why have, aren't you charging this guy with the death penalty? And then I finally, and you say, well, I don't believe in it. I disagree. I disagree. So Ooh. boom, you get walked. The next person comes in and fucking does it and does it like in the middle of the night. So yeah, maybe so, might have been something going it on. It's it, well, it, some t- something it's questionable. Yeah, something there. But like I said, he displayed. Um, tendencies of control, like having a, being a control freak. And, and as I, as I was about to say, he's very disagreeable in a disagreement. So if you had a disagreement with him, like, Hey, you know, he slept on the uh, bunk because you know, they got the bunk beds bottom and top. And it's like, Hey, you're leaving your shoes right here where I get up, you know, and I'm asking if you can move your shoes somewhere. So I already asked you to move your shoes somewhere. And he goes, you know what? (laughs) You did do that. And, and I can appreciate you know, your I can respect your wishes through all this, but uh, where else do you think I'm going to keep my shoe? He, he just kind of had this this aura of like, oh, I definitely understand how you feel, but I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like he was very cordial and polite, and you could just you could sense the the like, rage inside the, of him. Yes, the other side. Matter of fact, what was funny about him is when I was in the unit with him, we were both. Um, porters, which is like trustees where we cleaned up. Like an orderly. For, like an orderly, yeah. Where we cleaned up for other inmates. We used to prepare their food where we'd heat it up in an oven and then we would feed them, like give the trays and stuff out. Right. And he got into multiple, multiple arguments with people about like where they would throw their dirty clothes. Like if, if you threw some dirty clothes to a bin and you didn't make it, some people would just throw it and say, hey, it's closed and walk off. And he was like, hey, 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 hey. That didn't make it in there. <laughs> Very on edge guy. 
Like I like I was telling you, it, it's like I didn't think it was a death penalty for complaining about the chicken that they served you at the yeah, in the line. It could like, go, you, it you, could you'd go. be like, hey, man, when I get this little piece of chicken? I'll be in your cell later tonight. Yeah. We'll talk about <laughs> That's it. That's right. It's like you'll be a, amazed at what that bone, chicken bone, yeah, can do. Yeah, I, got a, <laughs> I slipped a butcher knife out of the fucking kitchen. When, <laughs> got something for you. Oh, yes, yes. He was... He was quite, he was quite politely intense. I mean, like smiling and you could just see the fire behind his eyes whenever he stared at you. It was, it was sickening. It was so, scary. So what happened with the, the court case? So in, in his, in his court case. Like he would go to court, come back that day. Oh, would he go to court and come back that day? Yes. Or? Yes. Well, yeah, he would, when he was going to trial, first of all, he was embarrassed <laughs> about being on the news every day. And, and he went to the officers and begged them to not put it on Fox Fox News that had him all over the television. They don't care. They didn't. Well, sometimes they did. They would change it, you know, because he didn't want. He was a, he was deathly afraid of someone jumping on his case. Oh, OK. Right. <laughs> like that was his number one phobia. He would never discuss his case. Like if I asked him, I said, hey, aren't, aren't you going to trial Monday? He'd be like, why? Yeah, never mind. <laughs> What'd you sorry hear? I asked. Crazy eyes. <laughs> right. What'd you hear? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry I asked. I'm I apologize. So he wouldn't even tell you if he's been to the bathroom, he's scared you to jump on his case. <laughs> Did you pee? That's none of your business. But <laughs> who have so, you been talking to? That's right. <laughs> Did they contact you? you Did they back. contact you? <laughs> I just want to know. Somebody didn't flush the toilet. I'm just asking. But anyway, so so yeah, he was he was <laughs> So what happened with his trial is he was found guilty because they brought in his ex. Actually, Did, the, well, I, th- I thought it was because he cut the chick's head off. Well, that probably had a lot to do with it. And they had video of him leaving the scene and <laughs> wiping, <laughs> wiping the knife off. <laughs> really? Really? His theory was there was the, the one armed the one armed uh, man did it. <laughs> yes. Really? His theory was somebody else did it. You know what's funny? It, I'll bet you that Colby doesn't know about the one armed man. See, no clue. Listen, oh I get this all the time. I'll use some pop culture reference from from you know a hundred years ago, and and <laughs> at and least fifty. Colby, right? <laughs> uh, Colby or Connor will be like, I just see the blank look on their face, and I'm like, Do you know what I'm talking about? Like, no, you don't know. You don't know who the one armed man is. See, but he's also oh wait, thirty eight. Just oh. turned thirty eight. Just turned thirty eight. So he's closer. Do you know who Wesley Snipes is? Wesley Snipes? Yes. I would guess it's a rapper. Oh! <laughs> oh! Oh! That explains Whoa, everything. I guess I must, I'm going to guess he's, actually, he's a rapper. He's a, he's a porn star. But no, let me... <laughs> Wesley Snipes. Did you ever see Blade? The movie's Blade? Holy oh. Jesus. You're like... He's like 26, 27 years old, right? Is that the actor? Yes, yeah, the yeah, actor. 20. Yeah, 28. 28. Wow. At, yeah. you're at 28, we're already you have not dinosaurs. Seen. Blade was... It makes me think, is, is a, what, a black guy on a motorcycle and blood? Fighting yeah, vampires? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a... He was, he's a, he's a well, knight. Well, he hasn't been in anything lately. He went to federal prison, so he hasn't been in anything yeah, lately. Yeah, yeah. Well, no, he's not. He got out, though. He got out, but he hasn't been in any movie since he's been out. You think it's because they're running that background, Jack? Anyway, so okay, so Shit here's happens. what I don't know how Wesley Snipes came up, but well, but, because he was the um, the last the fug- what was it, the fugitive in the fugitive, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's where the one armed man was. Yeah, but the first fugitive, what the first fugitive was the one armed man because in the first fugitive Harrison it was, was with Harrison Ford. Ford. It was a remake of a TV show, but um, it was basically it was, it was a doctor. His he comes home, his wife has been attacked by a man and stabbed to death. And he wrestles with the man, and in the course of wrestling with him, he realizes that he's only got one arm. He had a prosthetic arm. So the whole time during his trial, he's screaming at his lawyer, like, find the one-armed man. He's like, I didn't do this. You have to find the one-armed man. And so the big thing is throughout the whole movie, they're looking for the one-armed man. And so whenever people say, like, well, who did it? The one-armed man did it. Because it's this person that doesn't ex- – nobody believes he exists. But in the end, you find out he does exist. And, and he was the one that actually killed the – The wife, yeah. Right. So he was screaming the one arm. one arm man. There was a burglar that came in. Exact fugitive defense. He gave the exact fugitive defense. I wrestled with this man. I fought with this man. And, and if, if you, you find ask, this man. If you ask me, I was there with him for seven months. 
if you ask me, I I believe that in his mind he cooked that up. I believe that he probably went over every paperwork and realized that he could make that story and fit. make that story fit. And, let's and of course say, he lost. Right, I was going to say, but the jury did not believe did that. not believe that. Well, it's simply because he did the same thing to the 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 first girl. He, so he had a, a girlfriend at first up in Michigan where he lived, and he stabbed her in a junk, drunken rage of accusing her of sleeping with somebody else. And she managed to – she only got away because the neighbors intervened. He built some of the nation's largest banks out of an estimated $55 million because $50 million wasn't enough and $60 million seemed excessive. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crimes, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. Okay. You know, because they come banging on the door as he's he's got her pinned and stabbed. And the neighbors are banging on the door, and so he leaves. So that's the only reason why she survived. But this one didn't, and he's running out of the house. They got him running out with blood saying he's chasing him, chasing the one-armed man or the person that broke in the house and cut up his girlfriend. Mm. It's same story that he came home. And she, yeah, the identical to the fugitive. Mm. <laughs> but what what's so funny is being there with him, it's it's if you met him, it's absolutely obvious that he has that capability. It, yeah. it is the most obvious thing in the world despite what's shown on television, the previews of him looking innocent and he's yeah, like yeah. <laughs> Can you believe that? I would never. Never. You see him? I, I like. I mean, <laughs> you imagine the jury was up there, and I'd be like, every time they'd say something, I'd look at the jury like. <laughs> Listen, the biggest, the biggest Not cop. True. He was the biggest cop kiss up ever. Right. Ever. I mean, like when the police came around, he used to dismiss. He would dismiss me as. Listen, I'll do the talking in front of the police. You don't have, we're working together, right? Right. So the police like, okay, what happened to such and such? I go, well, listen, okay, exactly what happened was Mr. Jones came over this way, approached Mr. Allen, asked Mr. Allen, like, what happened to his tray? Mr. Allen answered, and I'm like, I can't even say a word. I go, well, uh, 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 uh. Mr. Allen answered him, letting him know. This. It's like, wow. Super controlling. Like super controlling. Super, even answers for me. So unique, unique guy. He wasn't your celly though. Yes. Oh, he, no, he was your celly. He slept right above me. Oh, I thought you were just using that as an example. No. Did he ever move the shoes? No. But he, but you're <laughs> but you're still here. Yeah, I'm, I'm, maybe you know, I I was submissive. <laughs> unlike and, unlike and that ex girlfriend, I took every spork I found under his mattress. <laughs> you're not getting me with a spork, buddy. <laughs> um. Wow. <laughs> So, so who, who, else, who else you meet? Well, uh, well, wait, wait, wait. After he lost. What, oh, they, well, they take him away because he, if, if you're found for murder or if you get life or an extensive amount of time, they put you in lockdown because they think you might kill yourself. Oh, you can't have that. No, you can't. You, know, you can't have a killer killing himself. I no. mean, I mean, I justice that. wouldn't feel like it was meted out. Even no. though they, they wanted to kill him, they wouldn't allow him to do it to himself. They feel like they were cheated. So, um <laughs> People think he's funny. See, Colby's laughing. <laughs> anyway, so so who else? Who else should meet? What, what else? What else happened? All right, so all right, so I guess we'll do. Let's do the serious people first, and then we'll do the non life threatening people. So then we have. So I'm in a pod at the Falkenberg Road Jail, and I'm one of the orderlies. There's four orderlies, so it's three of them are murderers and me. So this is very. So clean up and taking care of business is very serious. Like, are you going to sweep your section? Do you laugh around and joke with these guys? Of course. <laughs> what do they do? They, they, listen, but they make jokes yeah. like, well, Mr. Allen here is the only one with the possibility of getting out. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> you guys. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Please, come on. You know I'm going put, put, to put money on your book. Yeah, of course. Yeah. You you promise? Yes. Put it down. Put the, put the weapon down. Yes. <laughs> So what? Ha who, who was the other guy? All right, Tyrone Johnson. All Wait, right. 
black guy? Black guy. How okay. did you know that? <clears throat> How did he know that? Anyway, <laughs> Tyrone Johnson killed his girlfriend and her son. Wow. In okay. the apartment. So. At, what, because if it had been on the beach, it would have been more romantic? Why in the apartment? I didn't ask him. Why in the apartment? I didn't I didn't ask him. It was a little. Okay. So um, he's he stabbed. No, I think he shot them. You never, you never fucked with these guys. Like, come on, Tyrone, honest. It's just me and you. Oh my god! What listen, happened? listen. Tyrone was the biggest re- zealot of religion. I hate those guys. Fake. The biggest fake zealot of religion that I've ever met in my life. Ever met those? Uh, what are the Christian for the stay or whatever? They yes. do they walk in and grab the book and start Hip, hypocrite all the way. <laughs> complained when, about everybody else having a problem. And then when they left, when they leave, they would drop the book. <laughs> they pick it up when they walk in the door and they drop it as they're walking out. <laughs> the biggest religious fake zealot ever I've met in my life with all kind of emotional issues. So is he? He's going to get out? No, he. So you I, can talk like this, okay? <laughs> Because if he's getting out, you better be more polite. Uh, never mind everything I've no. just said. But anyway. wait, wait, what do you mean he won it? Hold on, he won his appeal. <laughs> he wasn't a bad guy. I knew he was innocent. That's right. He didn't kill them. So his accusation is of shooting his girlfriend and then looking for her son mm. and shooting him underneath the bed as he hid there. I think he think he was eleven. Douchebag. Yes. Okay. His reason for doing that is um, apparently his his son, this was his girlfriend, and that wasn't his boy that, that he killed her, but his real son committed suicide. Tyrone was in the military, by the way. I forgot to mention that. Okay. His real son committed suicide, and I guess he was watching a show, and his girl wanted the, him to take her somewhere, wanted to go somewhere, and he said no, and she goes, that's why your son is a bitch. And end up killing himself, you know. And then oh, that's that, what he said. She said, "Of course, yes." Okay. And well, they have video of him crying in the police. St- and crying is something he does quite frequently. He's a he's a crier. Yes, he break down every every so often. <laughs> it's Jesus. like Ty, 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 Ty. All right, you can have my piece of chicken. Just get, ease up, guy. Ease up. So. So he's emotionally unstable. Yes. So apparently his girl said that to him and he he snapped and shot her, which, you know, I guess they would have probably been understanding. But really, I think he got the death penalty for killing the boy. Yeah. He, he claimed that the girl had the gun and he wrestled it and shot her or she shot him. She shot the boy. All right. His, During the struggle. Yes. The gun went off and he shot. The, they, yeah. They, and they, the they shot the boy. Off. And, and and end up shooting her because she got more into the struggle is what they said. But the proof was that he shot the boy under the bed and then drug him out from under the bed. I'm assuming that ballistics doesn't uh, bode well for his version. No, it did okay. not. And he ended up getting the death penalty. So, mm. um, yeah. But um, the whole t- so the whole time he's there and with me. Now he is... It, it's amazing that the group got along. Like we we got along. We were complimented as being a very thorough um, unit of click of orderlies. <laughs> the bathroom was immaculate. Showers were clean. You know, <laughs> nobody really complained much about things that didn't no, get done. No, I'll bet. It's like, hey, hey, you guys didn't take out the garbage. You have a meticulous fraudster who cl- <laughs> who's very, very cleanly, and you have the other guys keeping everybody quiet about it. <laughs> yeah, if you want the garbage taken out, you take it. It was a four-star review yeah, yeah, yeah. every time. Every time. They said we were great. We buffed and waxed the floors. We were very meticulous as a, as a, as a group. So the, the third murderer... I feel like this is going to get demonetized. And I feel like we haven't done it said anything wrong. But go ahead. You really you think so? Yeah, it, it may get limited monetization just cuz you keep saying we keep saying murder. <laughs> like that's the kind of stupid the algorithm just says it. That right. They'll just be like this guy said this 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 yeah, no, no. But then you have to ask them to do a manual or a uh 
is that manual review? Yeah, manual. A manual but I'm, not, review. I'm not painting them in a good light. Yeah, no. you're thinking that there's a logic to YouTube. No. So they, they may or may not. It's, it's automated. So what, what happened with this other guy? What happened with the other Jason <laughs> serial killer? Jason Funk? Yeah, Funk. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Jason, <laughs> Jason Funk um, stabbed someone, I think it was 26 times. It, it was a, a business partner of his. Because 25 didn't seem like enough. It and did. 27 seemed excessive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, my God. I mean, at what point during the stabbing do you start thinking, this is crazy? <laughs> like, what am I doing? I mean, he's, he's long gone. He's gone. <laughs> I got this blood all over the walls. <laughs> this is going to be a major cleanup. So let me tell you something funny about him. He wouldn't. So he was back on appeal from the Florida prison. I think he did this 1990 or 2005, I think it was. Okay. That that he committed his crime. He was back on appeal. So he was he was part of the 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 clique also helping out. Um so your first meeting of him, you would swear he was a flaming homosexual. Okay. I mean <laughs> But he's not. Yes. Hey. He he does that. He's been up the road and he is a, uh, I'm not going to think of the name, kind of a grandmaster of the Florida State Prison's RDAP philosophy. Okay. So he spits out all of those RDAP terms. Oh, you're awfulizing, oh, Isaac. Oh, my God. But he's flaming. You're awfulizing. You're taking this as your own. Flaming like Richard Simmons, right in county jail, but he's in prison for a murder. For a murder, okay. so like so, figuring him out was like my main thing because I'm going, you're super syrupy. Mm -hmm. So if you're up the road with nothing but men and you have life, you had to have crossed over. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. I was just go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, seriously. Like, I, I'm, and I wanted to figure out if he. So, in my mind, like, I wonder if he went in, if they exposed him, or what the secret. Said, well, he would never admit it. Like, trying to get the information out. Like, well, you know, like, did you have a boyfriend up there? He just look at you and 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 keep going. He wouldn't. Even, <laughs> he would, would never admit it. He would never deny it. Super syrupy. There for murder, but is a huge. RDAP. Let's just call it RDAP because I forgot what the Florida program is. Right, right. So similar to the federal yes. R, uh, uh, residential drug treatment. Uh, yes. Program. So he he used to spend his time teaching me the Florida RDAP, giving me all the terms, telling me that I was like. So well, I don't understand. So did he go through it once or was he like, a, did he work no, in the he, program? He worked in the program. He's oh, at okay. the institution that everybody mm. in Florida wants to go to for the program because it's a soft ass institution. Okay. And hung around, of course, you know, nothing but black people in prison. So, yes, he did. So <laughs> was he a white guy? Yes. Okay. Do you remember the guy that was in Coleman that was there at the medium oh, for for a tax? Remember tax fraud? Not tax fraud. For, for the, he was a sovereign citizen. Yes. And he was. He's worse than him. Um, what was his name? Because he had to check Paul in every two hours. Yeah. He had to check in. Listen to this. This guy had been at the low. He'd become a sovereign citizen. He actually had gotten himself registered as a corporation and then managed to get a judge to write a letter saying that the Bureau of Prisons had no jurisdiction over his corporation. So it had his name. So it said, it was a, a letter from a federal judge that said, that said that the, the Bureau of Prisons has no jurisdiction over, and let's say his name is Matthew Cox Incorporated. So it has his name. And so he went, packed up all of his stuff, goes. <laughs> <laughs> he's laughing. This was a, he's at the low. Goes to the warden's office. He was at the medium. No, no, he was, this was when he was at the warden. This was, this oh, is how he we, got to yeah, the That's meeting. how he got to the meeting. That's right. right. That's so right. he went went to, to in front of the warden, stands there and waits in, in front of the warden's office. Finally, the lieutenant comes along and goes, what are you doing? He goes, I'm waiting to be released. They go, well, have you been called to R&D? He goes, no, but I have a federal judge saying you don't have jurisdiction over me. He read the letter and he goes, okay, okay. Hold on. Let me get the warden. 
goes to get to Warden. Warden comes back, reads the letter, and goes, all right, all right, I understand. Are you a sovereign citizen? And he goes, yes, I am. He, he, she goes, well, I know what to do about this. <laughs> Grab him, handcuff him, take him in the shoe. He sits in the shoe for six months, and then they send him to the medium, and now he's in the medium where he never should have been. He wasn't prepared for the medium. And every two hours, he had to check in with a guard. He has to go up and show them because they charged him with an escape. So now you were already at the low, miserable. Now you're at the medium. You more miserable. More miserable. I don't remember his name. God, he was flaming. Flaming. No, he wasn't. He wasn't flaming. Not he, like this guy? Oh, what? I remember one time you told me that he was on the top tier watching a guy take a shower because the showers yes. were all exposed in the medium, right? Because you can't let well, those guys, you, you have to be exposed out there because they didn't want, you couldn't have a separate private facility because you'd probably get raped. There probably could be rapes there. So they have, your showers were basically right out in front of everybody. You have a door, but if from the top tier, you could look down on them and see guys in the shower. Like the door was so far away that you'd have to be standing there naked. And you said, you go, bro, this fucking guy was sitting up on the thing, staring at this guy. And I was like, well, I mean, he's, he's gay. And you go, still, I just thought he was above that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, and he was. That's how he saw yeah, it. But so look. Like, <laughs> so, <laughs> No, he wasn't worse. flaming. I, I, you could just tell by his demeanor. He was, that he was Okay. He was quiet. Jason is flaming. I'm talking singing Madonna, Madonna songs. Hey. Yeah. Flaming. This flaming on. That's what I call it. Absolutely flaming. Which, but nothing about him screamed murder at all. Okay. You know, and he didn't discuss his case. And I didn't learn about him until I got out and looked him up. Because he never, he, he told me he had life and he probably had no chance of ever getting out. He came back on an appeal because I think they gave him an aggravated assault and the murder and they gave him life on both so what had to happen and that was excessive exactly so it's they, they, been life plus two years plus 30 so they changed it from life double life to life plus 30 and i'll bet when the judge did it and hit the gavel he said that's right yeah <laughs> damn shit. straighten that out got that right baby <laughs> Look, double your life ass back to jail. Double <laughs> life. Like I didn't have that coming. That's right. <laughs> life was thirty. Okay, reasonable. But I can like, do that. Double life. Forget about it. Come on. What are you thinking? I'm gonna die. Come back. Do another life term. Stop it. I'll do thirty. I've, he'll do the thirty first. It was con it was concurrent. So he was he was good. So he'll get the thirty done. And right, in case they bring back parole, <laughs> like that's ever gonna happen. So anyway, yeah, yeah. Then I got a chance. <laughs> but double life, no, unacceptable. So, so that was that was his 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 hope. So yeah, he gave no murder. He was probably the, the person that chilled out. He was kind of like my partner in keeping the other two calm because he was, he had done enough time that he wasn't as upset as the other two who were pending. Yeah, he'd accepted it. He, he's had accepted These, Those fame. guys were on the, on the beginning, the beginning, the starting point of their life sentence. This guy was, he, he had, He'd settled into it. He had settled into it. Yeah. So he, you know, he'd get up. Tyrone would be in a bad mood or crying. He'd know. rub his shoulders. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine that the, the like, all these murders? The I one mean, guy's crying all the time. The other guy's like, "It's okay." It's he's okay. like, well, he's like, "Oh, rainy face." <laughs> No, you're joking, What's with right? You yeah, know. he called him that. He no. Goes, Who's got a rainy face this morning? I'm like, I'm like where am I? <laughs> the other guy's you, yelling, straighten your shoes up. All the shoes have to be pointing that's south. Right. That's right. It's like, let's not be so intense, Mr. Terry. <laughs> Loosen up. Wow, that's a set of characters. <laughs> oh, my God. And uh, we're all trustees. That's a TV show. That it was a, Yes. Yes. In fact, we used to tell, I tell people that all the time. I'm like, the trustees are all murderers. They're like, but you're not. I'm like, no, I'm not. No, they, I'm they, glad to be alive right now. They never now. found the body. That's the <laughs> trick. So listen, I have a question for you. Did you guys, so when I, do you remember the Marshalls holdover in Atlanta? Yes. Okay. I've never been there. Oh, okay. Well, it's, it's. You I've know, heard about it from a lot of people. It's honestly, it's like a unit. It's like a, um like a unit at, at, um 
at Coleman at the medium. So if you took one of the the units that we were in, like you know, it's two tiers, and you basically made it like four times as large. No, no, may, maybe six times as large. So it's one long, with, and, then, and then there was a gate in the middle and a and a walkway, but you know they serve. Obviously, it's like being in the shoe. They serve you through the. You know, you don't get out and go get your food. Like, so did you guys have to heat up their food and give them to it, feed them through the tray? They so got this out? is this is Falkenberg. It's open bay. Okay. So it's just like the the low where it's four bedrooms in a section with a wall up. Right. So there's 72, there's 72 beds. No, there's 64 beds. And then there's people sleeping on a boat in front of certain cubes. But when you come in, you start off on the boat and then you make work it up to a up. bunk. You work your way up to a bunk. The trustees, they have an area, we have a washing machine because the way they work is um, we wash and dry the towels, the washcloths, and the boxers and the socks. So a unit gets a load of all those new, we pass it out. So when they go to the shower, they have a new towel and when they're done with it, they throw it in a, in a bin and we wash them. Okay. So we slept in one area, we had one little cube, but we are the only ones that had double like bunk beds. We had one bunk bed and two regular beds. So whenever we, when the food comes in, it would come in on a cart. We would stick it in the oven, heat it up for about 20 minutes, take it out of the oven, get them ready, and then they would line up and come and get their food, and they would eat out at tables. It's okay. open bay. Okay. Yeah, I did, guys, when you said you had to heat up their food, I thought, what, you're heating up their food and bringing it to the, to the room? But no, no okay. I heat it up, and then they'd line up, and, and so we would hand the trays out. You know, you know of course, so I want to say this about them. They were very – they. Who? I don't, I don't have prison, a nice word. The jail? No, I'm talking. I want to say this about the three, the three murderers. Okay, all three of them. We need a better, a clickier name than the three murderers. Like something. The three musketeers. The, okay, <laughs> three musketeers. Okay. Let's call us the cleaning crew. Yeah. All right. I want to say this about them. They were snitches. They were. Oh, they told on everybody. Oh like, my god! They went to the police on everything. Boziak steals a tray. Oh, I'm just gonna tell the cops. All right. I'm like. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> yeah, it, it, the motherfucker took a tray. You're chopping people's heads off. <laughs> I mean, it's what like you doing? now, <laughs> now you're Mr. Morality. You stabbed <laughs> someone 26 right. times. Yeah. They, they would actually get pissed off. Oh, this guy. Oh, this guy. He pissed all over the floor. He shit in the bathroom. Well, I'm gonna tell the police. You, you, <laughs> you, you chop some chick's head off. You shot a child, and you stabbed someone 26 times. Yes, and you're upset because. <laughs> Billy Bob took a tray, an extra tray. <laughs> it's not right. Yeah, exactly. And they're like, well, I would tell them. Oh, they'd argue in the morning if someone snuck in line twice. Oh, you've already eaten, Matt. Mm. I, I, sat, I was just standing around going, this is unbelievable. These are murderers and they're telling the cops on it's un, It's unbelievable. It's, and, and when they talked about it, they talked about it as if they had some kind of higher moral code than the rest of these drug dealers and drug users. <laughs> like, well, yeah. Wow. I mean, they, they do that because that's how they live at the house. Oh, they don't clean up behind themselves. That's how they live at their homes. Like, but but you kill at your house. Yeah, I so I don't say. I would say why you're not in here killing your house. <laughs> like, why aren't you killing in here? I don't know. Like, if they do that, just kill them. I don't understand what the problem is. I mean, you know. <laughs> You're, you're always a, I guess you're a big man when you've got the nice or, or, or it's an 11 year old or a woman. Yes. So. But when you're dealing with another man, like, yeah. hey, Popo, excuse me, yeah. come here. Can you handle this for me, please? These guys are no good. So those are, those are the high level people that, that I guess I, I dealt with or met when I was there. So there was a couple of people who I, there's a lot. And, and like, I tried to narrow it down to the ones that I thought right. were hilarious. So. All right, so we had a gentleman by the name of Mike. So jail, unfortunately for America, they lock up a lot of homeless and mentally ill people. So, no. Yes. No. So we had a lot of mentally Why ill. Why don't they send them to all of the insane asylums that they have all they, over the world? They've closed. That, that don't exist. Like yeah. back in the 70s, they would... They had a say, like, you know, Colby doesn't know this. What's this tell Colby? Like, they actually had, in the in the 50s, 60s, 70s, like, they had insane asylums. And you, then in the 80s, they just closed them all. Do you know what happened? And I, I can't think of the name of My memory is garbage. I can't think of the name of the case. I'm hoping I can get it. Like, but the Supreme Court. So someone sued 
because there were people being placed in there that weren't technically insane. All right. And there was a lawsuit that the Supreme Court allowed to go forward, which closed every insane institution in the United States. Hmm. Okay. So <laughs> that's why they all shut down. It had nothing to do with the states like, hey, I don't give any money to that because, you know, if they thought you were crazy, that's where they sent you. Right. But they, they shut them down. Now they do have a couple of hospitals, but they're hospitals and they have a ward for that. Right. But that is the very unstable unstable. If you have a, any level of stability, they're going to let you out. And they don't hold you. They can't hold you longer than 90 days anyway, the way the laws are structured, but not to get boring. Anyway, so there was a gentleman by the name of Mike who used to, from time to time, and I, I'm going to tell you why I, I bring him up. It's hilarious. is because if you spoke to Mike at any point in time, but after I tell you what he did, he would have a conversation just like you and I. Like if I approach him and go, hey, Matt, how's it going? He'd be like, I'm good. What's up? No, I'm just chilling. But he, so his issue was he would take a blanket and put it over his head and then start beating himself in the face. Like he'd go under the blanket and be hitting himself. Like when he'd come out, he'd have a bloody nose or a black eye. He used to run into the wall. to the, He cut the top of his head and had to go to medical so i hate to ask it but why do you ever I, ask him like yes. bro, what are you doing i get a little frustrated sometimes man <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> me too <laughs> but i've never done that i know i'm a little different <laughs> you got any chips yeah <laughs> <clears throat> anytime you spoke to him it was like you can like he could be under there punching himself. You're like, Mike, Mike. He'd come out. Yeah, hey, what's up, Isaac? What's up? Are you okay? Eh, I'm a little down. Wow. And this, and, and it's not like this happened a few times. No, this happened, happened over the course of the police would. The police were upset because they couldn't get medical or the psych ward to take him because he was so his demeanor his demeanor was so normal. At all times. It, like, if you talk to him, he was fine. Like, you say, stop beating yourself. Okay. That's a good idea. Yeah. I'm going to go watch TV. No. And he'd get up and go get in a chair and watch TV. His demeanor was every moment normal. And then two hours later, <laughs> he'd, he'd be, be beating the crap out of himself. You look up and he's bleeding from the nose. Or he knocked one of his teeth out. And you're like, what happened to your tooth? Eh, I knocked it out hitting myself on the bed for eight. So... So what was he in there for? He, I would say it's trespassing or di di disturbing the peace, something like that. I couldn't exactly get his charge. And every week his mom would come and see him and he would get this package of food. Like uh, they'd order him a package and he'd get a ton of food and he'd eat it all. Like a, uh, a $70 bag of soups and stuff would come and he'd eat it all within a 48 hour period. Like a feral child. And he'd go to visitation. Oh, hi, mom. How you doing? Do you remember um, Palmer? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Palmer was mentally the, disturbed. The, the white guy Palmer, right? The, the one white... that used to sweep the compound all the time? Rob the was... Robbed multiple banks? Yes. That's quite a story, too. I wish I could track him down. He, he yeah, he was bizarre. He was, I talked to him all the time. Yeah. He, he, so did he ever tell you about the time he tried to escape? Yes. Listen, this guy was just like a normal, you'd think he was just like kind of a normal white guy. And so was Mike. If he, you, if you talked to Mike, you'd be like, Mike, he knocked his tooth out. Like Mike, what happened to your tooth? Hey, I knocked it out, hit myself against the bedpost. And you're like, oh, <sighs> Well, so, okay. so so what do you say to that? You know? Paul, um, just for people watching, Palmer was a guy in the medium who had robbed a bank, and basically Palmer had told me, and I think he sure told you this too, is that he'd never had a job where he was able to support himself. He'd had multiple jobs, he's never able to get one where he could support himself. So one time he goes and he robbed the bank. 
went in, you know, with like a note or whatever it was. I don't know it was what a note. They, it was always a note, right? Because he didn't get much time. He got like three years. But what time. happened was they changed the law to where he ended up getting ten years, right? Because it was also multiple times too. That's sure well, they yeah, didn't but, help. Yeah, because he had gone he had, to prison. He'd gone to prison, got out, and did it again. Right. Well, his, he was shooting for larceny because he was trying. Larceny is basically using the law is using. Uh, the company's rules against them. So the rules of the FDIC in a bank is you have to give over the money if it's requested right. during a robbery. So what he would do is he would request the money. Can you please, he put please in the note. In his mind, he, he committed larceny. Well, they changed the law. And if there was any intimidation whatsoever, they put intimidation in the robbery and they hit him with a robbery. He was very upset about that. That, that he got the last time he was in jail, he got robbery. Because on larceny, he only, he only gets five years. So his plan was always just to go away for five years and get back out. I used to talk to him all the time. And, and they blew it and they gave him 10 and really pissed him off. <laughs> Not that it changed anything. He was, he was just super calm. Yes. But one time he had he tried to escape. He put on like multiple layers of clothes. This wasn't at Coleman, but he put on at another prison. Put on multiple layers of clothes. Walk, walks up to the gate. Keep in mind, these gates are, you've got people in, in you first of all, they have, um, they have towers. They also have the, the pickup trucks that are driving around, right? The perimeter. the perimeter and the gates have motion detectors on them. He climbs the gate or climbs the fence, climbs through all of the concertino wire. And as he's going, he said, it's stripping off. Clothing. clothing. He's he's shedding clothing so he can get through all of them. Climb up. He finally gets over the second gate and ends up at the bottom of the tower. And he said he's down there. He said I just got there. He said I'm I'm naked. And he said I look up and he starts banging on the door. And finally a guard comes and looks down on him and says, "Hey, we got an inmate out here." And so the 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 one of the one of the pickup trucks comes around and they run out and they get on the ground and they handcuff him and they take him back in the, to the, they put him in the shoe and he got charged with like a, an escape or something like, which was three years. Yeah. That was his plan though. He wasn't ready to get out. He was, oh. <laughs> I didn't know that part. Yes. I talked to him all the time. He wasn't oh ready God. to get out. He was nuts. Yeah. yeah. He was, he was, he thought he was in control. So his, his, he'd come up with a problem in his head and, and his solution was more jail time. Yeah. They but he didn't like to be. Oh wait! But he liked the medium. Did he like the medium? Like there was. Yes. Okay, he didn't like the pen. He liked the medium. Yes. Okay. And he was sweeping the compound all the time. Yeah. So. Yeah. Nice guy. He was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. So you were saying. So you were saying mental. The boom, 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 banging yes. his head. Well, I bring Mike up because his demeanor, so so super calm, and that's why they never took him in to the psych ward because they're like, this guy's, there's nothing wrong with this guy. He's very calm and relaxed. He's just beating himself up. I mean, is, is that a problem? He'll be like, literally yeah. not figuratively. Oh, I kind of beat myself up about that. No, no. He's You're, beating himself yeah, up. I'm, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> have you, con next time somebody says I'm frustrated, I'm going to say, have you considered wrapping a towel around your head and banging it against the wall? No. Oh, it's it works for, for a buddy of mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's been known to work. It's been known to work. All right. So then um, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Roderick. So <laughs> <laughs> what did Roderick do? Well, how many of these lunatics are on this list? Um, well, we got Nico, who was the millionaire um, snitch for the feds. Oh, yeah. No, let's go. Go with Roderick. Go ahead. <laughs> well, Roderick is a. <laughs> anyway, Roderick is a big. T well, no, Roderick is a. How do, so you, how, do you, I, how do you explain it? So can I explain him and then you give me a description because I can't come up with the proper okay. um, derogatory term for Roderick. So Roderick is the, is the kind of guy that he's a, a people pleaser and he kind of does everything. He's one of those people that gets along with everybody. Like, hey, how you doing? What's up, man? What you need, man? I got you. I got you. Right. So he hangs out with a bunch of different girls. And, and, and some of these girls sleep around. So he might hang out with some prostitutes to sleep around, give them a ride. You know, he might have a brother. He'll deliver. Somebody needs some drugs. He'll deliver some drugs. He'll pick up drugs and help them out. So he had a prostitute that I guess he was friends with 
that ended up that was sleeping with a supposedly a senator. Okay. Right. So this girl told him, listen, this senator is, I think it's a state senator, but I'm not sure. But this is a story he told, so I don't know if it's true. So he supposedly this girl ended up sleeping with a, a, a senator, and the senator was doing drugs or something, and he'd fall asleep. So he'd just smoke weed or something and pass out. So she told Roderick that would pick him up. So he's like, whoa, the next time he falls asleep, call me. Because then they're thinking they're going to go by his house and – she lets him in and they steal a bunch of stuff from it. Right. So I guess the senator falls asleep. He, he gets goes, the call. He gets the call. He goes over there, steals some valuable stuff, some like some, um, what do they call it? Paraphernalia, not paraphernalia, um, memorabilia. Right. Some sports memorabilia, supposedly some, um, some money, some jewelry, like watches, like Rolex and stuff. They steal all this stuff out of, from the senator and they, they both leave. So he gets arrested and he goes to jail for um, obviously trafficking drugs because he was on the run for, I think he had got into a shootout with somebody or something along the line. So when he goes to jail, he decides that he probably wants to, to tell on the senator. He wants to use the senator's information as leverage. Like, hey, hey I want to tell somebody about this situation. That's- that you know, a senator this, has a drug problem? The senator like, has a not, drug problem. That's not really a, a get-out-of-jail-free card. That's well, he's, just... he's thinking it is. <laughs> but he's kind of a <laughs> like a multi, multi-faceted multi hustler right. that, that runs around and, and he boasts. So he tells everybody in the unit about this. He's walking around telling all these people that he's about to get out of jail because uh, he knows a, a senator that does drugs that he's going to turn in. You're not, but okay. <laughs> well, he didn't. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) but that was that was his master plan to do it. But um, I guess that didn't didn't work out too well for him. So he's kind of a kind of a shysting hustler that tries to hustle a bunch of different people. You know, he was he was kind of bizarre. Okay, low level street hustler, low low level. But he was funny, though. If you if you met him, he he kind of he kind of talk. If I can do his voice, like, listen, 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 Zach, Zach, my man, Zach, what's up, man? Oh, my God. (laughs) <laughs> one of those guys that's always happy at all time to see you. Yeah, that's my boy. I'm telling you, we all going to come up, though, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. Nico. My, <coughs> my man, Nico. So, Nico explained to me the ways of snitching. So, a, 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 <laughs> that I didn't know. I mean, like, insider snitching. So Nico did federal time, right, and got his trafficking charge reduced down to, I think he was sentenced to three years, and ended up serving one, for okay, like uh, kilos of cocaine, something that would normally get life. He ended up with one year. He, as a matter of fact, he had my lawyer, Miss Paul Mary, okay, who insisted public defender. No, she was his lawyer. She he paid her, who insisted that he shouldn't do. He paid her less than I did, by the way. That's upsetting. Okay. Anyway, you know, I paid anyway. <laughs> Is this for your first, for the, the federal charge the first time or this time? Um, My federal charge the first time? Yeah. Yeah, I paid Lori. Oh, okay, that was her. Okay. Yeah, I paid her. Anyway, I'm very upset about that. But anyway, okay. <laughs> anyway, he paid her and Lori argued that he shouldn't spend one day in jail. <laughs> Is to this- the judge. <laughs> Whereas to me, she argued that I should be willing to, to take responsibility for my crime. Right. right. <laughs> when I was say. arguing against spending 10 years in jail. <laughs> but <coughs> she got in front of the judge. And I'm reading the transcript and argued the judge that this man shouldn't spend one day in jail. But I, as I told him, you know, to me, she argued that I should be happy to only spend 10 years in jail. Anyway, <laughs> love Lori. So <laughs> you follow the 2255 against her, right? Yeah. Like, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me going down that road. All right, so <laughs> he was teaching me the ways of of snitching, giving me insight that I did not know. So insight number one, the feds pay snitches. Yeah. So if you're lucky enough to become a paid informant, they give you a percentage of whatever the drugs are worth or whatever money is seized. That also includes ghost. 
money and drugs. So if I'm a paid snitch and let's say Corey is is doing drug transactions. All right. And I approach Corey and I say, hey, can I sell you a million dollars? That's worth Colby. Of okay. Oh, yeah. Colby. Corey, Sorry. Whatever. Corey, Sorry. Corey, Colby. I got it wrong for <laughs> to save face. <laughs> Plus, okay. it's been 15 months, so <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> so Colby's sell, selling drugs. Yes, and, and and I'm a paid informant. If I can get him to agree to buy or sell a million dollars worth of drugs and he doesn't have it, right? I would get like- A percentage of the million I'd dollars that he could never have come up with to begin with. And they would actually pay me that. Nice. I told him, I go, you're lying. He goes, no, I'm not. It's in, in, in an agreement that he signed. Mm. So informants that are paid are paid a percentage of whatever. So obviously they look for higher level drugs. So the more drugs they can get someone to agree to, the more money they actually make. It's absolutely unbelievable. So he is a millionaire from the people that he's set up. What was he doing in jail? Um, because he sold to... He had four sales in St. Pete where he sold to an undercover four different times and they gave him eight charges. He violated supervised release that he had five years after only being out eight months. He absconded like in my 14 years in prison of doing legal work. All of the informants that I have met and the stories I've heard about informants, they are the worst people in the world. They try to play both sides consistently. They feel like if the police are on my side, I can do whatever I want. <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm. I, I listen. I met a guy in in the low that was literally. I mean, it was insane the stuff he was telling me. It was like, I mean, he's and he'd get he'd get he'd get caught for something, and the other DEA agent would come in and say, "Look, you can't charge him with that." Like, like we're the ATF. We, got, I understand he had the guns. I understand this. I understand that. We've got him. He's in the middle of this huge drug transaction. You can't charge him. And they dropped the, drop it. And so a lot of go. times they would protect him, you know. But I understand at some point when you are no longer valuable and you keep have gotten away with all this stuff, one day you get busted. And you go, hey man, I need some help. And they go, uh, uh-uh. and you get twenty years. And they're like, what? Well, understand. <laughs> We had, we had an agreement. It's, <laughs> we did, but you're, we're done with that now. I don't even want to start on that pack. I got so much to say about it. So um, one of the, so he he taught me a lot. That was one of them. The, the trick that always blew my mind was that he wanted to snitch on someone because he's in, we're in a state pod. We're in a pod with people with the state. Right. And the state doesn't, well, they didn't do like snitching and time cuts. They are starting to now. Just so you know, I wanted to tell you that. I, I learned that Florida's starting to. Right. If you if you tell, we'll give you less time type of shit. Right. <laughs> but um, so, so all the state people in there, he was walking around gathering cases. So when he's telling me this, I say, well, he goes, yeah, I'll just have him move me to another pod. Like, I'll get a case. Somebody will tell me enough to get me a case that I can turn into them, and I'll have him move me to another pod. I say, well, don't you think it would be suspicious that you move? He said, no. What I would do <clears throat> if I left is say I got moved out because of you. As soon as I left and I saw anybody in the pod, I'd tell him, hey, Matt's a snitch. <laughs> he told on me, and they moved me out. <laughs> Which, like, in my mind, I'm going, that is freaking brilliant. Because you've just reversed right. the, the entire... You're the snitch. And how do you prove that you're not the snitch? Right. And everybody's saying, it. well, they moved so-and-so. They moved him. And he said oh, that he, he got, got moved. Oh, Max, the one that got on. Uh, yeah, Nico yeah. moved. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm going to myself, like, you guys have... Yeah. yeah. No scruples. None. None. You're absolutely unbelievable. Plus, they're paying you all this money. When, when I was going to say, when the FBI came to see me at Coleman, they offered me money. And I went, no. She says, no, I mean, we can put two, three hundred bucks on your books, or, you know, on your account. That way you have commissary. Like, I mean, I, I you know, I, I just want to make sure that you're taken care of. I said, no. I said, my fear is that I cooperate, you get a case, 
and we get in front of the judge or, with, or the prosecution and the prosecution says, your honor, like we don't need to give Mr. Cox any time off. We've been paying him for all of this information. So because I had spoken with my cousin who said, don't ever accept a dime because he had met a guy that they were giving him like a thousand dollars a month for like a year and a half. And when it came time, they busted the people. They just stopped showing up. And he was like, okay, wait a second. I need my time cut. And they said, well, yeah, but we've, we've been paying you. And he's like, I didn't do this for the money. They were like, the, I know, but you know, we went to the prosecution and they said, look, that we paid this guy, whatever, $18,000 for the past. 18 months and and you know he was like well look he's got something out of it like i'm not going to file anything for this guy he's got a couple more years he can do those two couple more years as if eighteen thousand dollars is worth two or three more years but you know he said yeah he said so so my cousin was like so if they offer you money he goes, don't take it so when i sat down they were like listen you know if you need me to i can put money on your books i said uh-uh <laughs> i know about you i'll starve no with that. yeah well, both I think both sides are are scumbags. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I'm fine with that. You're fine with that. Well, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say it, it's it's just that some of those people go bad, Matt. They actually use the law to break the law. They think that they're you. You weren't in that category. You didn't like try to use law enforcement to be able to sell and and deal drugs. Right. I mean, right. they they use them to bring down their own competition mm, right oh you want to mess with me i'll get you arrested yeah you know i'll use the government uh, as my as my own retaliator so yeah, like yeah. chapo like chapo like also, yeah yeah there yeah. you go i'll give you information on this guy on these cartels on this guy and this guy and then have them all have your competition busted and then you <laughs> blow up even bigger yeah um so go ahead sorry oh no no it's just that um and and nico i guess had come to the end of his line you know he had he had discovered a body for them, yeah, he said he had a buddy that had had shot somebody, and asked him if he knew how to get rid of a body, and he gave that to the cops. And the cop goes, "We just need you to go over there, with with a wire on, identify it as a dead body in there, and then we're gonna go in." And he said he kind of walked in, you know, and the guy. Oh know, my gosh, is that a dead body? <laughs> no, no, no. They asked him if he could, like, the people called, "Hey, can you get rid of a dead body?" He's like, right. "Yeah." So he said he came in, and the guy he goes, "Where's the body at? Let me see the body." So he said he walked in. This is why Lori was saying that he shouldn't spend a day in jail. So he walked in and he goes and he sees the body. The guy's laying there. He's dead. He's like, what the fuck happened? He goes, we got in an argument over blah, 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 blah. And I shot him. He was like, okay, well, let me call my people and I'll, and I'll get him over here. and We'll get that out of here for you. And he said the guy pulled the gun like <laughs> and put it in his face. He's got a wire on. Right. Right. And he said he doesn't know what happened that he didn't panic. Like, ah, get in. Right. Get in here. He said, all of a sudden, he just kind of like got cool and said, what are you doing? He goes, I don't know you, dude. He said, the guy with the gun said, I don't know you, man. How do I know you're not fucking going to the cops? And he said, he looked at him like, dude, you, one of your moments, yeah. dude, you asked me over here. Yeah, bro. you called me. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? He's like, do you want me to get rid of this thing or not? He goes, well, fine. If you feel that way, then shoot me, motherfucker. And he said, started walking off to the door. He said, about to piss himself. <laughs> walked to the door, opened the door, and left and closed the door. Went to the car and said, oh, oh. <laughs> get <Yeah>. over here. <laughs> That's right. Cops bust in and, and, and took him to jail. He said, Lori fought. That's the reason why he, he had already testified in trials to get his time down. But that's the reason why he only spent a year in jail on a three-year sentence. He did a year. And he wasn't even out six months. Before he caught a whole new four sales and delivery. And you said he'd made a ton of money. So he had a ton of money out there. Yes. He didn't need to do it. He yeah. just, you know, the problem is that you, you get into that life and you don't know anything else. And then you can't even stomach going to a regular job. You're like, I don't understand. I'm going to, you're telling me I got to bust my ass all week and you're going to give me like $500? Like, fuck that. Because there's never been any consequences for you. No. Yeah. You know, it was funny because that's one thing he said that I, one of the lines that stick in my mind from being in there is he said, he said he was living a lifestyle where I committed a felony every day. And I told him, I said, you know, I remember when I had that lifestyle, mm. like every day I'm committing felonies. You know what I'm saying? It's, it sounds funny as a, as a criminal, but if you're saying that to a person that's never been to jail, it sounds atrocious. Right. You know, but as a criminal, you're kind of like, yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah. Good times. Good times. Yeah. <laughs> A felony a day? Eh, I'll top you. <laughs>
two felonies in their way. <laughs> it's crazy. So last person, <laughs> okay, I call him Mr. Pathetic. Now I met him on the tail end of this is a long story. No, I didn't. I met him when I went to work. At some point, I went to work in the kitchen as a at the Hillsborough County Jail, Falkenberg Road. They decided one day that they're going to give me the privilege of working in the kitchen. So I'm like, you know, and like, we're going to move you to another unit and we're going to move you to a quieter unit where it's quieter. And we're going to give you probably two trays for lunch or two bag lunches. You guys are too good to me. I know. And we're going to give you a chance to work in the kitchen where you'll be able to eat extra food. And we're going to cook you like we're going to give you some of the food that we feed the staff. I'm like, wow, awesome. They're going to treat me good. <laughs> and then they moved me from the uh, mm. uh, the clean unit with the murderers into a unit that's filthy. So I this is when I learned that me and the murderers kept the unit immaculate. Right. So they moved me to a filthy unit. It's, the unit is absolutely dirty. The, the people who clean up their garbage. As a matter of fact, when I complained, they're like, I'm like, dude, I go, have you swept the bathroom? It's... It's junk all over around the toilet. He goes, the broom's over there. <laughs> like, you sweep it, motherfucker. Dirty unit. Um, there's They have a tablet that you can use. So when I'm in my unit, I get the tablet all day. Right. In this unit, they don't pass the tablet out for later hours. Plus, you're working. So you can't even use the tablet that much. Then they send me to work. They're like, okay, you're working a 10-hour-a-day shift. Six days a week. So then when I go for into, an extra tray, yeah, I'm so burning when, off the extra tray <laughs> easily. When I go into work, it's washing. There's 2000, there's 3000, there's like almost 4000 people there. So it's washing 4000 dinner trays twice. Wow. So when I come in, I'm washing the breakfast tray because at lunch, they give you a bag. So as soon as I get to work at 11 a.m., I'm washing the breakfast trays. Then I'm turning around and putting food in the breakfast trays, sitting it out for dinner. Once the dinner trays come back, I'm washing the dinner trays. After I wash the dinner trays, I get to go back to how my long, unit. How long did you do this? For about four weeks. Until? Well, until I, I got fired for uh, talking during count. <laughs> <laughs> if I had known that, I'd have talked the fe- <laughs> second fucking day. Horrible. <clears throat> Why did you keep doing it? Why didn't you just say, look, I'm done. Yeah, I'm not doing this. I don't know. I said that to myself many times, but I don't know. I, I don't even have a good reason, Matt. I don't have a good reason. So anyway. Send me anyway, back to the murderers. I, I want to go, go back. back to the murderers. At least it was clean. And they wouldn't tolerate these little pieces of chicken. But no, listen. So, so in that unit, there was a couple of people who didn't have to work. I don't understand why they were there at all. One of them was, uh, and I can't remember his name. I called him Mr. Pathetic. So he had no money and no, and he claimed to have no money and no friends. So, <laughs> That's how you introduce, hi, I have no money. I have no friends. Well, he wanted a cup of coffee. It started oh. off with begging for coffee. And, and, and being in jail, I know you, you know that <coughs> coffee is, everybody begs for coffee because it's the appetite suppressant. Right. <laughs> So he's begging for coffee. I give him coffee. So after about the tenth time that day, I'm like, dude. He's like, man, I'm sorry, bro. I right now I ain't got any money. I'm waiting to get out. So he's telling me his story because he's, you know, trying to befriend me. So yeah. I guess I give him more coffee. So he's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm only hitting here because, you know, my wife put a, a a restraining order against me, and I'm here for violating a restraining order. I'm like, really? I go, how long have you been in here? He goes, I've been in here. This time I've been in here like uh, about a month. I said, this time? How many times you been in here? He goes, this is my fourth. I said, what the hell were you in jail for before? Drugs? He goes, nah, I just keep violating the restraining order. What? I'm like, against your wife? He's like, man, we've got two kids, man. We've been married for about 22 years. I don't understand. Like, all of a sudden, she just up and was tired of, of having me around. So I'm like, okay, well, what kind of work do you do? He goes, I don't work. I said, what kind of work did you do? He goes, well, I never really had a job. Like, so of course my mind's going like, what, the? what, what kept her, what made her, what made her wait 22 years? <laughs> so I've, he's, I've never, he's never had a job. His wife owns a successful chiropractic 
clinic. She's the owner with other chiropractors under her. They live in a very large, well, she lives in a very large, he had to get out. Right. Or in, she, yeah, go ahead. In a very large house. And he claims that one day she came home and just like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want you to get out of my house. Supposedly, he says he drinks and he goes into a drunken rage or something. And so she's like, I'm tired of you. I want you out of my house. It's over. I said, well, is she seeing somebody else? He goes, not that I know of. She's just tired of me. But I don't understand, like, why she's tired of me. I do. Exactly. I'm like, uh, you know, we've been here 20 minutes. And, uh, <laughs> I can. I've got. Get, get out. Yeah. <laughs> I have, some, you're, you're uh, ins- I have some insight on her. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I'm like, what about your friends? He doesn't have any friends. And he was living with his dad, and his dad was on the verge of throwing him out. I'm like, listen, Matt, Matt, you, this is a human pathetic. Like, if you looked up pathetic in the dictionary, it's this bitch. <laughs> I mean, what, why didn't he get a job? I don't know. That would be a question you would have to ask him. Yeah. I don't know. I was just, you never asked him? He just didn't want to get a job. Couldn't get a job? No, he said, I think he said he was going to get a job. But he, he got 22 out. 22 years. What's he, holding you back? Yeah, he got out and he came right back twice. So he got out, came back, because I was there about a month. So he got out about a week and a half, came back to the same unit. So that unit must have supported restraining order. Like it might have been people who broke restraining orders. Right. So he came back for breaking the tra- restraining order yes, again. He went back. Yes. And then, like, I left that unit because he was supposed to get out like within a month or something. Okay. I left that unit a couple of months later. As I was leaving, I ran into him or going to court, I ran into him. I said, I go, Did you ever get out? He goes, Yeah, I got out. I go, How long were you out? Oh, about two weeks. What happened? And I called my wife. <laughs> It's like, Why? <laughs> well, she said something. I don't remember. I think he said it was a Facebook posting that said something that he didn't like. And he wanted to ask her why would she put that on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Curiosity does not trump. <laughs> does not trump the no, uh, a restraining order. order. Yes. Well, super, super pathetic. I said, what about your dad? Is your dad tired of it? Yeah, my, my dad's probably going to kick me out this time. I don't know where I'm going to go. But he asked me to keep in touch because he just doesn't have that many friends. So I was hoping to introduce him to you, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. Are you sure you don't want to interview him? I, I, I. <laughs> Get out of my house. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm all filled up with my uh, pathetic, with pathetic friends. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. Pu- I'm talking about someone else. Oh, of course. They're not even friends here. I mean, anyway. <laughs> but, I mean, that that's kind of the the long and short of some of the people I met there. I think I, I listed all the ones that I really wanted to meet or mention. In, in my 12 months at Hillsborough County. Um, when I went to Pinellas County, there wasn't really any. What about the guy that you, you had told me earlier about a guy that was uh, in a, a high-speed chase or something? Oh, yeah. Um, cop, cop, uh, I have his name, too. I meant to look him up. Um, he, he tells that story much better. Oh, okay. The only part that I think is cool is when he was, because he drove across the Skyway, like both ways. He went to St. Pete. Then he turned around and came back on the skyway. While being chased? While being chased. Yeah, he took him through like three or four counties. Listen, he jumped into the the Hillsborough County. And he was in the Hillsborough County River for about nine hours. Hillsborough County River? Is there a Not Hillsborough? river, not river. Um, What, the bay? The, the bay. Okay. For like nine hours. When Trying were, to elude them. Yes. The police. Why were they chasing him? He said because he dropped off a friend and he felt he was high. Of course. <laughs> he dropped off a friend and then he felt like someone was chasing him. It turns out <laughs> if you drive like someone's chasing you long enough, people will chase you. And he goes, that's probably what ended up happening. <laughs> <laughs> What's with this guy? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to chase him. I'm actually going to chase him. <laughs> That man needs to be chased. 
That's exactly what happened to him. He thought someone was chasing him. And he goes, like you say, eventually someone started chasing yeah, yeah. him. So he jumps out of the car and runs. I want to see if I can track him down. I want to see if I can find him. He'd be funny. Oh, my God. Listen, he's hilarious. If he's sober, he's also very easily induced. Hell, I'm boring you. So no, no. It, you, but- I'm, I'm sorry. Look, I woke <laughs> up at like 3 in the morning. Me too. Really? Yeah. Why? Just you just do now? Yeah, well, I was scared, you know. But- <laughs> I just wake Bre- up. You know, it was I, it had, for a long time. It had been breakfast time. So I, anyway, go- <laughs> I was gonna say when everybody, I used to wake up at like you know five, and everybody'd go, "Why, why are you wake up at five, Billy?" Well, that's when they turn the lights on. Oh, right. <laughs> the guards <laughs> walk. Do you ever have the where they would do that? They in the low, they would turn on the lights. If, in, for like four o'clock count or five o'clock in the morning, they would turn on the lights and walk around the count. It's like, come on, man! <laughs> like, what do you do? And then they shut them back off for like an hour and a half, like. <laughs> You know, it's, uh, you know, so you wake up and it's like, I might as well just get up and go get some coffee now. They already counted. I'm allowed to walk around. <laughs> and I'm walking around. What yeah. the hell? Then I'd go watch a, uh, go watch the uh, infomercial for Home Title Lock and think, I should be on that commercial. I really should. They don't have anybody like me. And, then, and now, now, now I'm do. on. Now I mean, and now they do. I mean, right? hey, that's what they hate. So it's it's good to be back and, 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 and back in play. Trying to put your... Trying, trying to, to put, put my back. life back together, trying to get it going. So um, there was some very interesting people to meet. Some of them I've managed to to, to kind of talk to. Some of them I want to track down and see if maybe we can bring them in here and, and talk to them and share more in depth their stories. That are probably not the guy that beats himself up. I don't think you want him in here. I mean, if we can keep him calm, um, He's no, always. Oh yeah, that's right. Like, how funny would that be? He's sitting there with a broken nose, <laughs> bleeding, <laughs> blood, a missing a tooth. What happened to the tooth? Like a, I, you know, I, I was upset. A little, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> like, what's he locked you? up oh, for? I mean, I've been beating my head against the desk, and obviously, I broke my nose. You, know? huh. you got a tissue or something? Can I? So, <laughs> you're like, so you're trying to get back on your feet. Yes. If someone wanted, if someone was so inclined to say, "Hey," or declined. But <laughs> to say, well, you, you want him to decline. So, <laughs> hey, let me send this dude 20 bucks because, you know, he's trying to put his life back together. He's owes a couple hundred dollars to uh, to uh, 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 overdrawn on your bank account from when you, you know, took off. Yes. Like they don't stop yes. billing you for stuff. No, they don't. Um, so, you know, and they were so inclined. Like, are you going to be able to open up a like we'll have we can put either Colby can put his. Like before Colby put put his PayPal. Right. Or you can get a PayPal or a Cash App and I can put I'll try it. To, I'll get both of them. We can put it in the in the description. Okay. Yeah. Please, please. If you can help me get back going so that I can make more frequent appearances and Absolutely. kind of get my life back going and, and stay on the right track this time. That's get, what I'm determined to do. Get out of the sister's spare room. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Listen, because I slept I was in Stacy's spare room. Forever, my friend Stacy. I yeah. stayed in her spare room. I told you that, right? Yes. I stayed in her. Well, the cop that we we she was running basically a rooming house. Like she's got me in one room. She's got the cop in the other room. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a cop in the other room. Yeah, she was going through like a divorce, and you know needed to stay somewhere and went and moved in there. Wow, a um, female cop on that? Yeah, she was a forensic cop. Oh wow. Um, so, did you guys exchange stories? Yeah, she was she was she was interesting. She was an interesting <laughs> person. Right. Um so uh I was gonna tell you, did I ever tell you this that I stayed Stacy has in her house she has like a salon and she also had a really big walk in closet in the salon. I moved my bed into the closet and slept in the closet. And wow. she was like, There's no windows in here. Are you sure you want to do this? I'm like, because that way in the main room, the bigger room, which was about the size of a regular bedroom, I, w- I was like, yeah, but I can do my studio in here. I can paint in here. And the bed's in the way. So if I put it in here, it just fit in the closet. So you, you could open the door, walk in, and lay in bed. <laughs> it was just perfect. I fit perfect. Um, and she was like, yeah, there's no windows. I was like, no, it's cozy. I, I'm, you know, after 13 years. <laughs> no, no, I'm good in here. This is nice. I sleep good in this car. So, yeah, it was, uh, I stayed in there for, yeah, about 13 months. I think 13, 14 months is I oh, stayed. Wow. Yeah. Bizarre. Bizarre. Jess what? would come and see me. 
We'd at the, sleep at, in, the, at the house. Yeah, we'd sleep in the in, in in the closet. We would put my put up my laptop and watch movies and lay in bed and watch movies and and honestly, like thrilled. Like it was like this is awesome. Like you're in a closet. You live in someone's spare. You don't even live in their spare room. You live in their closet. And you're, you're watching YouTube videos on your laptop, and you guys are like, I've got it made. That's right. Like hey, compared it, to prison, it's, it's, yeah, it's much better. Much oh yeah, better. Much better. No guard. Like shut up. Yeah. Oh man. <laughs> no murderers uh, feeding you dinner. So yeah, that's not bad. Good times. <laughs> that's right. All right. Are, yes. Anything else? What no, else we got? No. That, that, well, what about the YouTube channel? Yeah, let's say. YouTube channel. Um, should I promote it? Yeah, because we're gonna so shoot a video and you're gonna put it up on a on a YouTube channel, right? And where I'm gonna kind of start talking to a lot of the people who I've met in and out of and out of jail, giving some stories of other people that I know, describing them, putting my little spin and sense of humor on it. Um, hoping to take the channel to a level where I can interview a lot of different people, maybe throw in some skits and. So, depicting some of the stories that we describe in jail situations that we think are hilarious. So please check it out. 